Welcome to the Image Critique Show with Jeff Johnson, Rick Avalos, and their special guest. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Good evening, fans. Hey, thanks again for tuning in this month. We got another wonderful, wonderful, fun show with uh, my dear friend and brother, Mr. Rick Avalos. How are you tonight, Ricky? I am doing terrific, man. How you doing? Good. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's funny how... We do this show every month, and then it seems like it's forever in between. And but then all of a sudden, here we are again, and and right. I'm so because we're having a fun time doing it. We got a good selection of images to. Um, oh, somebody's got their mic on. Background noise. Oh, sorry. Probably me. There we go. Okay, very cool. So, anyways, yeah. So again, thank you for tuning in tonight. And as you guys know, we're gonna. Go through. We've got about twenty-five images tonight to chat with, and uh, and just talk to you about our points of view. Remember, this is just our points of view. It's not the gospel. Um, uh, it sounds like it when when Rick says something, we all listen to it, so it will be the gospel. But other than <laughs> kind of like E.F. Hutton used to be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> used to be. Huh? <laughs> I'm I'm heading down that path. I know exactly. It yeah. Used to be. <laughs> well, Rick, can you? So this is our. Um, what did I say? This was our 16th program since we started the show. Um, you'd think we were, we'd were we be good at it by now. <laughs> wait, wait till we're doing this, and I'm telling you it's the 165th show or something like that. Um, so that's Well, I'll tell you what, though. Uh, I don't know about the rest of our colleagues that tune in, and, and they're so loyal, and I truly appreciate that. You know, for better or for worse, I, I just got to tell you, Jeff and I and Clippy and our guests just have a ball doing this so yeah. and of course uh the comments that we get back so often is uh how much they appreciate the input and i'm not trying to wanting to pat ourselves on the back but uh, uh because everything i speaking for myself any comment i make is not original i learned something from someone that was kind enough to guide me along and mentor mentor me in a lot of ways and uh you know it's just that, that time to uh, to share. Uh, before we get too much further into it, I do want to recognize and acknowledge and thank uh, Cliffy Lawson. Yeah. Um, you Absolutely. know, this just wouldn't uh, be possible or seamless uh, as it usually is without Cliff. He's our engineer, director, um, uh, bouncer. Uh, <laughs> he's our Rick, he's our glue. He's what he's what keeps us all together here. He's the glue. Absolutely, absolutely. And Cliff, I appreciate it and thank you. Did Again, you notice how his head kept getting larger? As we were in there? <laughs> I don't know if you have noticed how much grayer my hair has gotten since started. Like, I was gonna say it was black when we first met. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. Hey, you guys know how to fix that though now with Cliff. Just have him roll backwards on his seat there a little bit and then it... <laughs> <laughs> see. <laughs> You know oh my you, gosh <laughs> so jeffrey funny. do you have some uh, a few announcements because i know we want to get started yes. yes let's do that real quick hey a, we, a couple of really fun things that we want to share with you we started a new feature um that we're going to be doing we're calling it you guys who love the english language you're going to love this one or hate this one we call this conversations with and my <laughs> midwestern upbringing that's just perfectly fine english rick looks at me like Finish the sentence, finish the sentence. But the whole, yeah, exactly, he's pulling his hair out of that one. The purpose, though, is that we're going to have conversations with people who hopefully you know, some of them you won't, but just to bring you some different points of view as some of our, uh, our, our colleagues in the industry, not necessarily just professional photographers of America or Colorado groups. But for example, a couple months back, we had a conversation with Unmish Dinda uh, of Pix and Perfect, and it's on the our, both our website and our uh, YouTube page and it's absolutely a delight. The man is a genius and he's so fun to chat with. So listen to that one. But I just put up on the site we had an interview with. I don't even know what the right words are, Rick. Legendary. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. He absolute delight, uh, Mr. Warren Motts. And he, uh, for those of you who know who he is, you know what we're talking about. I got goosebumps when I said it. He's just the coolest dude ever. <laughs> uh, please go listen to that interview. It's about an hour and it's just really fun. He's got where he was sitting in his uh, war memorial re museum that he has in uh, in Ohio, and he talked about his photography. It was just an absolutely wonderful thing. And the other thing that is as cool or cooler, Rick, I'll let you tell about the other interview we did. It's not up yet, but we'll be. Oh yeah, um, 
John and Colleen Graybill. Um, gosh, we spent a weekend, and of course, Cliff was there documenting all that. And he, Cliff, man, you just brought a ton of equipment. I mean, as professional Very as professional. you could possibly be. And I, I really appreciate that. But we had a wonderful weekend with John and, and Colleen. And for those of you who are not real familiar with their, their project, and actually it, it isn't even a project, it's a mission that they're on. Uh, John is the great grandson of Edward Curtis. So as a photographer, um, gosh, if we haven't heard of Edward Curtis and you know, that's definitely a lookup for uh, yeah, uh, for any definitely. photographer that doesn't know much about him. But they are on a mission, and they're doing such a wonderful uh, job, uh, you know, documenting uh, Edward Curtis's history. I mean, it's been written many, many times, but from this perspective, as a as a relative, a descendant of Edward Curtis, and get this. If you do check out Edward Curtis, Google or whatever, and you see his images, John and Colleen are now photographing the descendants of the subjects that Edward Curtis photographed. That's cool. Wow. That's so cool. Isn't that That's didn't incredible? That leave chills to your, yeah. to your body. The same, awesome. the same technique, too. John went and got Absolutely. the same comp. He's doing wet plates. Um, wow. And it's kind of funny. We were in the house. He showed us his dark room. Basically, it was their laundry room, and he just hung a, a curtain over the window at night, and he processes them in his laundry room. So it's probably even more fancy than what Curtis may have had, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very cool stuff. So there's yeah. and, and the the interview is going to be a two parter. We've got enough conversation that Cliff put together for us. So it's going to be a two parter. That'll come out here next week. Hopefully, I'm just finishing off that. Um, yeah. So and it's we'll, all it's. It's all so polished. Uh, you know, Cliff does a, a wonderful oh, job. Phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, I, I learned something from Cliff. So you took the, the B reels out, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding those for ransom. There you go. <laughs> I know. That's the problem. We, we, oh, we'll, yeah. <laughs> those outtakes, those are something to see. Yeah. I'm God. sure. <laughs> those are probably more valuable than the video itself. Uh, um, another what real else quick, we got, Jeffy? Uh, real quick, just a, a couple things on the schedule. So our next program is going to be uh, September uh, 26th, regular uh, fourth Thursday. Uh, at least that we're, we're talking about that one. I guess that's what we were talking about that earlier. What we've done, though, is we have... Uh, uh, so we have uh, an October 3rd show, and that one's definitely set right now as far as date. And the reason we did October 3rd is because we have the Colorado State Image Competition coming up on the 20th of October. So this will give you two more programs to be able to um, submit images to us to have get some feedback if you want to help you know, prepare for these competitions, the Colorado State in October. And um, and so on like that. So watch for the schedule change uh, of those kind of things. And um, oh, I was going to say one other thing, but I totally forgot. Oh, so we're doing something new. So we've done the image competition, and then we've done critiques, video critiques. So this year, we're trying something a little different. Sunday the 20th, it'll be an all-day event. We encourage you to come out, and the information's on ppcolorado.com as to where the location is. But it's a fun Club 79, they call it. And it's all about food and, and fun and there's prizes and stuff. So please plan on coming and spending the day because it's an absolute blast. Uh, Rick and Megan and I will be broadcasting from there. We'll be off in another room because you guys will be too loud. But And all of our <laughs> judges will be in their home safe in their own quarters. Um, but then the next morning, and this will be all done via Zoom. You'll get all the information. We are going to have an actual live critique of each and every image. So... Basically, you, there won't be an extra charge for you this year for critiques, but you'll be able to tune in and watch the live critiques where we have the actual judges who did the competition. We'll have it, take two or three and we'll talk about each image and that'll go on for that Monday morning, the 21st. So plan on that one. So we just got a big red heart from John. So that's cool. <laughs> that's that for us, John. Thank you. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and so on like that. And we will record it. So if you can't make that Monday morning, no worries. We'll post it on the site and let you know about that. Hey, we've talked enough. Um, there's a guy, a really good friend of ours, sitting off on the, the side of the, uh, off on the stage, waiting to debut with us. So, Ricky, I'll let you have the honors of introducing him. And such an honor to introduce our guest tonight, Mr. Pete Rezac from Reno, Nevada. Um, Pete, it's so good to have you here. Uh, gosh, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, 
Pete's credentials. I mean, master photographer, uh, craftsman, master artist, um, and uh, certified professional photographer. You know, and, and I think there's uh, uh, something really cool to be said about Pete and his work. Uh, Pete photographs, um, believe it or not, if anyone remembers a thing called film. <laughs> it's my favorite four letter F word. <laughs> oh, I like that one. And and all formats, correct, Pete? Yes. Right up to. Oh, yeah. I'll, all format. of it. All of it. All Why of, not? It. And, uh, you know, in addition to um, uh, to Pete's uh, accomplishments in terms of degrees, he's also a giver. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, education, you're going to, uh, if you haven't already, I think you may have already received your 200th. Yes, I just surpassed 200 TG merits. Teaching merits. Oh, that, very cool. That's wonderful. That is that's so cool. cool. Um, yeah, I've got more pride in those than, than the other stuff. Because There you go. There you go. I really appreciate you saying that. Um, gosh, you know, there's so many things that could be said. National Award recipient. Uh, uh, you know, educator. Uh, I, you know, if you haven't had an opportunity, my friends, to uh, to see Pete's work, I mean, some of it, just a, a small part of it, is uh, on our site. Uh, it's the that uh, showcases uh, Pete, but uh, his work is just wonderful. We've had the privilege of having him and teach uh, in Colorado Springs, and we certainly look forward to having him back again but before we get started because sometimes we might forget towards the end pete you're available for um for um, teaching engagements correct oh yeah absolutely how can, you be, how can you be reached uh well believe it or not facebook messenger is probably the easiest way to get a hold of me so if we're not okay. friends on facebook send me a facebook friend request and it's pete rezak my name spelled right on the zoom window all right <laughs> Very good. Well, Pete, again, thank you so much. We're looking forward to. Uh, to yeah, I uh, hope uh, I hope everyone's still friends with me at the end of tonight. <laughs> well, we'll let you know. We have a secret survey that we'll put out. Cliff, we'll Cliff give me the signal. Here's, you, here's you the never deal. hear from us again. Here, here's the deal, uh, Pete. We can tell when on our Zoom thing, when the participants start 25, 24, 20, 15. <laughs> Uh, well, Rick, hold on a second. That, that's not good. That's not going to happen. Oh, well, <laughs> you better not. You're the guy who taught me everything I know. Yeah. But, but Rick, hold that's on. Why, that's why but, I say it's not going to happen. Right. But Ricky, hold on. Don't get too excited because you can't start at 25 if we've only got three people in the room. So, <laughs> well, the night is young. The night is young. Hey, let's uh, let's do this, huh? Any uh, any other comments? Anybody have any questions? Any thoughts you want to share with us real quick before we get started from the, the peanut gallery, as it were? Otherwise, we will get started with the show. Let's do it. And All if right. we could mute everyone except... Yeah, and Don, you can also turn off your camera if you wouldn't mind. It just it takes up a little bit of uh, bandwidth. I'm going to steal the screen. Oh, hey, Trevin Baker is joining us. Trevin, All right. He's not in the room yet, but hold on. Trevin Baker, how are you, sir? Good to see you. Or good to good to know you're here. Trevin, how are you, my friend? Or I hope you're doing well. All right. So hey guys, I'm doing good. Good. Good to welcome. You. Welcome. <laughs> All right, kids, let's get started. My first image tonight is called Afternoon Tea. And it should open. There we go. And we'll be courteous and we'll let uh, Pete go ahead and, and start off chatting about what you see here. And remember the tools there, you can color all over it. Oh, here's tools and coloring and where where are, oh, here's my thing. Uh, first of all, wow, um, gotta say, uh, was not what I was expecting to see as far as afternoon tea. So great job kind of leading me to think about something that uh, this was not what I was expecting to see. Um, then of course, uh, I, of course I have an appreciation of the style uh, that this maker has chosen to do here in black and white. Uh, so nice job with that. Uh, and I can just uh, kind of imagine what the feeling is here with, you know, the, the hands up and, and everything that's going on with it. So, course then there's other things to always talk about 
Um, and part of me is this person here, I think is our main subject. And even maybe, you know, the rest uh, here, but this tree, and I understand that when you get into this scene, that's probably what, what it was. Oh, am I supposed to draw here? Let me draw yeah. like this tree. I, I, I don't know that this is going to add to the success of the image. And I almost feel like if all of this part was gone and we just kind of left these people here, I think you still get that afternoon tea um, uh, situation here. Uh, I, the, the presentation, I mean, people have different viewpoints on presentation, whether they could be bright, you know, you put a dark or a light mat either, or I don't necessarily get so hung up in um, presentation. I mean, any of the photographic museums I've ever had the pleasure of, of visiting, I know that basically photography, uh, when it's presented, is presented generally uh, with lighter mats. So I don't get too hung up uh, about that. Um, I do like that it's not pure white uh, on that, but I do think that this is kind of where this where the story is. I get what's going on here, but because they're engaged with something else, they're almost kind of secondary. I mean, what do you guys think? Yeah, sorry, I, mean, I bro sorry, I wrote all over that. No, that's that's what it's for. I mean, it's it's, it's <laughs> you know, I, I I really agree with you with regard to the tree. Uh, you know, and especially the limb blocking this uh, individual here. It's a great story. I do like the diagonal type of a uh, of a rendering here. And I'm just thinking, what if we were just to crop it and still see the trunk of the tree, crop it uh, vertically? We'd have a framing effect up here. Uh, we would eliminate the subject, you know, to the right that's being blocked. And we'd still, even though the hand of the subject on the bottom is the, you know, clipped off with the trunk, we still have a really neat story going on here. So um, I really appreciate the kind of like the photojournalistic approach to the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, Rick, is that if just because that tree's in that gentleman's face, just cropping through it and, and bringing it, I maybe would even bring it in a little bit tighter on the left too, just to kind of balance out the spacing there and then just kind of let it be at that. You know, and other little things, this is tough. If it's in the photojournalistic, the repetage category, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, Pete, you can probably tell us this, when you get a like this rock right here, it's kind of grown out of their head. Uh, for repetage, what do you suggest the maker do to, to, to play well, that? Well, I mean, you're gonna have to just use darkroom techniques. So if you could- You can't remove it, right? Yeah, you can't move it, you can't remove it, but you could certainly, you know, burn it down okay. uh, to do that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that 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 is, you know, certainly, you know, and, and as you're doing that, I mean, you might even put a, a darker burn vignette around, you know, just to draw a little more attention to those subjects right. as opposed to the, the background. But, yeah, I mean, in reportage, I mean, you're limited in what you can do, but if you could do it in the dark room with burning, dodging, cropping, uh, that's fair game to do. Well, look at the quality of the clothing and the skin tones, just very rich tones, beautiful rendition yeah. of, of through the range. I think that's handled so well. It's just some of these extraneous things are what will be holding it back from getting that good score. So, yep. All right. Thanks, guys. Let's move on here to the next one. Great title for that, though. Yeah, yeah. Titling, titling, we've talked about that quite a bit, and it's such a big deal, um, really, to get that right title. Um, for this for this one, I'll have a comment about this, too. This is called Banking... Oops, what is it called? Banking Towards the Blaze. Well, my thought, just right off the bat, first of all, I think the, the, I love the, uh, the, the cool tone, the blue tone, blue cast, almost a selenium kind of a feel back in the day. Um, so that's just really an interesting uh, technique to add to it. Then the mat and the, the little lip there, the little uh, stroke work well with it. Be careful. And so this works, but just be careful. If a stroke disappears, blends in with the scene, you'll get a judge saying something about it. So exactly. you're right on the edge right here on the bottom and the sides where the clouds are. So just watch that so you don't lose that stroke if you're attached like this. If you move that stroke out, um, 
<clears throat> boy, excuse me, if you move that stroke out over here, so it's just a little bit away from it, so you're detached from the picture, that might be a little safer in this case. Um, the one thing that hits me, I think this wonderful detail, a good story, obviously interesting point of view of an aircraft, you don't really see that in a thing, so I think it's nice. Um, I kind of think the, the fullness of the image gives it some tension, some some hurry up. I mean, it's a fire uh a plane is going to rush into a flare, so I don't mind that it's tight here and here. I actually kind of enjoy that. I'm glad you left a little more room here to give it some direction to go. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much. I had another thought there. Oh, titling. I'll just talk on this one real quick. Um, banking to the blaze, blanking towards the blaze. Um, I, I kind of look at this as kind of on the on the fence of being. I don't want to say a good or bad title, but your title needs to have a story to it, I believe. Um, and I guess after looking at it, you can say, oh, okay, well, it is. it must be a fire going to a fire. So it works. But sometimes when you include words that aren't in the picture, sometimes can cause a little confusion. Again, I think this is on the fence. Uh, but you don't want to just say fire plane or fire rescue. So um, banking to the blaze does give us a bit of a story. So again, it's it's kind of on the and I don't. I'm not saying this is any good or bad. I'm just using it as a definition. P, what do you think? Well, first of all, uh, wow, this is a, such a unique uh, viewpoint of an airplane. Jeff, can I can I just add? Can you rotate that just ninety degrees? For there me? you go. There you go. Sure can. Um, go here, the whole image. Just rotate it ninety degrees up. Oh, that's the other way. Not Jeff. that way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not. Maybe that's the crash after the. <laughs> it's counterclockwise. <laughs> counterclockwise. Well, you know, I thought but, I hit it, but apparently there not. you go. Zoom, or, zoom around. Smaller. Like, like, okay. Um, I get that we got clouds and all of this different thing. I just wanted to look at that because this is such a unique perspective of of this airplane. Um, and actually, I like kind of how it plays with the darks against the. Uh, the lights and the darks there. Of course, we got fire there, so you couldn't flip it so that we, we've got to go in the other way. But um, wow, I, I I love the creativity uh, of what we're seeing here, like the color harmony that's in play here, uh, the originality. You can turn it back to how it was. I just wanted to to see, because that's one of the things I always do is I'll I'll turn images around all different ways just to, to see. Right. Sometimes we get so stuck, like, hey, that's how I photographed it. That's how it's got to be. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's it's really I you know, just intriguing to like, wow, what, like, how am I looking at this? And it's so great. Um, I agree with the title. I mean, it's it's too wordy. I mean, bank, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm terrible at coming up with titles off the spot, but you don't need to tell what you're about to see or whatever. Um, I mean, you could just call it banking and that could leave all sorts of different uh, thoughts to a judge, whether it's, gosh, somebody walking into the bank. Oh, of course it's banking. It's an airplane that's banking. I can totally read into to that story. But the tonality of this is just fantastic. But I will tell you, uh, I've been on enough panels with people that this this, this, and this are going to eat his lunch. Um, you got to bring those those bright spots down. I realize that's part of, it's probably part of how it was going on there. And maybe even watch this one here too. Um, but wow, uh, lots to enjoy. And, you know, style is one of my favorite elements to really kind of to fight for or whatever. And so I appreciate the style, but I also... Uh, you know, creativity, but the originality of this, like, wow, I just wouldn't think of, I'm guessing this is a firefighting aircraft and all of us that live out in the West understand how important those are to our, uh, uh, to our, our communities. Our lives. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's absolutely incredible. And I, I actually like the fact that it's almost got this monochrome versus, you know, the reds or whatever they typically have. So I appreciate the you know, the style's done on that. I mean, I think this is really fantastic, uh, but I would certainly, um, you know, take a look at it. Just those bright, 
those bright areas there that are on the leading edge of the of the wing just because that way you just eliminate you eliminate low hanging fruit for somebody to obviously point the obvious out to and then it's hard to disagree with them when I'm like well yeah it's it's bright yeah it is the brightest part of the the image I can't disagree with that is it really taken away from me not necessarily but you know it's just a it's just something that can be worked on there but wow really really nice job on on the originality on this Ricky you want to add anything to this I think it's all been said <laughs> nice job well yeah, uh, you know Pete made a good point I just want to reiterate this one a little bit in a competition, I mean, we hate to use the word perfect or that 100 is the perfect score, those kind of things, because that really doesn't play into it. But when you get an image that's done this well, you really need to get down there and look at all the little tiny details. Again, nitpicking, picky, all those things come to mind. And that's not really the game that's being played here. It's it's more about just fine-tuning every little detail. And yes, in a way, as P referred to, it is taking things away that the judge might knock against you. So you see little shiny spots like this. They aren't that big a deal. They aren't. They don't t change the story. They don't pull your eye away. But it's one of those things that I, I definitely too would address and darken, put some detail in, or something like that, just to take it away from the judges. Take one more thing away from so they give you that better score, right? So. Yep. All right. Nice, nice image though. Wow. Yeah, isn't it a super image? Okay, then we have evening rays. Pete, your thoughts, please. Uh, well, uh, love the love the title uh, of the evening rays and just kind of that uh, almost light within a light. You know, you got hard light within soft light. And I think that's just uh, really, re, you know, just remarkable. And then, you know, I mean, you can't you can't. I guess maybe you can predict that something like that's going to go if you've been there or whatever. But I, I was just like, wow, you know, it's one of those things you when you go to that location, you just don't know what you're going to see. It could have been clouded over. It could have been whatever. But uh, to record this for us to enjoy, I think that's that's really, you know, really dynamite. A um, couple of things, though, uh, in this case, like on the presentation being kind of right there in that. I don't know that it, it's not, you know, it's not black it's not really dark gray it's not mean it's, it's somewhere in there but it almost feels like it's kind of given a um you know visually um trying to think of the word here it it feels like it's making some of the image look muddy um uh, because of the fact it's you know especially on the right hand side where it's so dark and then it it appears lighter there and of course you've got a little bit of that on the left hand side too kind of in the middle and so what it tends to make those darks look darker whether i think that there's detail in there but because our presentation is so light it kind of gives that that uh uh what is the word i'm looking it's kind for? of a milky look you think, think yeah it's 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 messing with us uh a little bit on that so uh so you've got that and then you know then it leads to like you know in that foreground because of that milkiness, then it, it leads me to like, well, you know, how are we doing on focus? I mean, obviously the highlights look sharp and you would believe that the rest of it would be too, just because it seems to be so far away. But those are just little things. I mean, it's a, a I like compositionally how we've got things played there. It's interesting to look at and move around, uh, but something, and I, I, I got to believe that that's the presentation that's playing off, trying to, to give that, um, you know, that, that play on those darks being maybe darker than they truly are, even as it sits here, why, you know, to, you know, spend time with it. Now I'm starting to see details emerge out of those darks, but as we know, and we judge, we don't always have the liberty of having an image sit in front of us for that long uh, for that to happen. Rick. Yes. Um, you know, we talked about uh, the presentation and the key line. Uh, and I like the fact that the key line is detached. If it was attached, then I, I think we would be losing losing it up here in the sky. So uh, kudos for that. But I would agree as far as the uh, the tonal value or color value of the mat um, is problematic to me because the bottom of the photograph blends in with the mat visually. And, you know, we want separation of the image to the mat. Um, 
And you know, our eye, our eyes go to the area of highest contrast. So naturally we're going to be focused in on this area. And that's and that's all well and good. And it's placed compositionally really well. But secondarily, you know, there are areas here that I think could be taken out because, you know, we've got this bright spot a tree against that really dark background and, and even this little guy right here i think can be taken out because you know they you know we've got this mass of highlight against the dark area and then we drift off a little bit to these other areas and and uh, i just think a little just a little bit of house cleaning like that would be beneficial but i i'm too getting the also getting the sense of the kind of the milkiness and the exposure yeah, I, I, I agree with most of what you guys said. Um, but I will say that I think sometimes when you get this kind of a, there is a haze going on here. And while you can still see the crispness, the feel of crispness of the mountain um, and such, there's still a haze going on, which is going to really cause, if you look over into the this area over here, it's it's very hazy of that time of day and even in the sh lower shadows here. So that's going to make this be hazy, whether you really realize it or not. So I think that's a tough one to get some good blacks and detail out there. But what these guys said about the mat being so close, the mat and the lip and the, the key line, all those things need to be very coordinated, but subtle. And that subtle is probably even a better word than coordinated because I've seen people pick yellows and blues and greens out of an image and do the mat. And it just stands out terribly. So probably subtle is the better word. I probably would have even suggested if you're going this dark of a scene, this dark of a mat, that the key line could have been a, a, a darker gray. It could have been, it looks like maybe eight or nine pixels. You could have done one or two pixels. It's just there for support, very subtle. And maybe going just a little bit either, I, I think I would have gone lighter because you've got darkness going on here. Light's going to work for the sky. But you know what? Every time you do a mat, you're going to have, However many judges, there are difference of opinions. So, right, all you can do is balance it and make it look good. And I think overall, the scene has got a great story. Um, the blacks and whites playing off each other is, is just really beautiful. Lots of great depth character. I see one, and I don't know if is this... Is that, I was just going to say, Jeff, does that look it. like a sensor spot there? I mean, that's... I think so, yeah. Yep. yeah. Yeah, so watch those kind of things, because you'll get four or five judges circling that in their sleep. <laughs> there. I'll see that. Yeah, I guess that important. could be smoke back there too. I mean, sure. that's, that's not a roundabout uh, possibility there. And that's the other thing too is yeah, we get that haze of smoke, but there's definitely a dark spot there. So yeah. Um. <clears throat> all right. Our next image is called fractured. Pete, what do you think? Cool image. Wow. Uh. Again, um, I'm not sure if I'm looking at a leaf or fractured glass or whatever. I guess it doesn't even really matter, but I do like I do like the creativity of the geometric lines. I, I do like that we have highlights and shadows to give dimension. Uh, I'm guessing those are water spots, you know, same thing. You know, we've got lots of visual interest uh to look here. I love the uh, you know, the the green color palette that that goes with it. Um, as I'm sitting here just looking at the image and sharing my thoughts, I mean, my eye just keeps moving around it. Um, it's it's really cool. And I really enjoy it, especially how these lines just kind of move us around through the image. Um, it's really, it's really sensational. I don't know. I don't know what else I would really have to say about it, but uh, I'll turn it over to my, my, uh, my mentor or my teacher there, uh, Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I agree with all the points you're making. There, there are so many uh, cool things about this image uh, compositionally. You know, we've got a really nice uh, curved line coming in. And then we have a strong diagonal line. So, uh, and then lines just really all over the place that keep our interest in the image. If I had any suggestions for me it would be presentation um I, and i do see a slight key line uh and i'm gonna want to say that it's a, like on a black uh, mat but i think uh, uh you know if we had a little different colored mat i it would uh, stand out that much that much more because i'm getting the feeling that it's more of a full bleed than it is 
uh, presented, even though we see this very, very faint uh, key line, but it's, it's a really well uh, executed image in my opinion, because I agree with the highlight and the shadows. Uh, it gives it some really good dimension. And we even have these little striations uh, that to me appear to be maybe, you know, rain streaks or what have you, but very, very interesting. Yeah, image. it's cool. What they said, <laughs> I think it's done very well. Macro is a tough thing to do when you get this close to something and, and still have a good story, still have movement, good composition. I think you've nailed it pretty well here. So don't know what else I would add. I think it's done done very well. Nice. I will say one last thing, though. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's interesting. You know, we, we've we talked about presentation on, on, on all the images. And I'm like, yeah, like I didn't even really notice uh, about the presentation until Rick was saying it. And I'm like, so I guess for me, that's successful in the fact because now I'm looking at the image. I'm not drawn out to the presentation or any of that. And, you know, oftentimes in my critiques of like if if you start having a judge talking about presentation, we're no longer talking about the image. And at that point, it's done. So. Um, so, yeah, this was I, I was was just a delight to look at. And yeah, I, I guess it is glass as I, I look at it. But gosh, that could be so many different things. Well, that's the fun thing, I think, about macro up close kind of stuff is you're kind of presenting something we've all seen or know of, but it, in a way that makes us have to stop for a minute and go, what is that now? Or where's that coming yeah. from? It yeah. brings, pulls your attention. And so this is, I think, handled very nicely. Yeah. And, you know, when it comes back to, uh, um, well, let's talk about presentation as one of the 12 elements. I think that as image makers, um, whether you're a juror or not, you know, I guess there are some of the elements that are our favorites, some that are not uh, as well uh, received by some of us. And sometimes we think, well, why is that element even in there? And beings, how presentation is one of them, I guess, yeah. you know, from my point of view, that's something that, you know, that needs to be considered. Um, whether or not presentation, uh, untitled, I mean, uh, you know, we're required to give a title, but yet it's not one of the 12 elements, uh, you know, and I heard someone argue one time, yeah, but there is storytelling. So that's, is that supposed to mean storytelling and title is the same thing? And my opinion, they're two completely different things. Oh, anyway, uh, that's, that's my story and I'm sticking, I'm sticking to it. with it. It's a great story. <laughs> <laughs> Well, how do you guys feel? Because I know there's been some conversation through the years about um, whether titles should be part of it or not. I know a lot of in the fine art world, uh, you'll see a lot of displays in galleries and books, whatever that's, it'll be, you know, plate one or untitled or no title. And that's a big thing in the fine art world is to not put a title on it because they're, the the message I hear a lot of times is that they don't want to put a story in your mind. They want you to form your own story. What you guys think, Pete? What do you think about that? Well, no, I I can totally appreciate you know what's going on with that. Um, I mean, honestly, me personally, I mean, I'm so wrapped up in the image that I just look at the image. It's just like it's like music. I hear the music, I never hear the words. Okay. <laughs> um, and and it's it's a lot for, it's a lot how you know images. Yeah, I'm not gonna penalize anyone on on a title or anything but i i just really try to enjoy the image um i know a couple images ago here with that airplane is like yeah the, it's getting a little wordy you know when somebody's you know announcing that and has to get into it then it's like i just want to see the you know i want to i want to i'm ready to see the image yeah um, you're, as, you're trying to tell a story with one swoosh of the brush yeah you don't want to lay it all out for them but you don't want to leave them hanging either i think you want to give them a, just the the, 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 yeah. the direction sign the arrow sign but yet to answer your question but like when i post my work uh to to instagram because i suck at titles <laughs> i i constantly want to make sure i put some sort of piece of work it's just something that that challenges me to try to come up with something but i i you know i just love the beauty of the images and i don't think a title whether it's gonna for me whether it's gonna like oh take it one way or other you um, know what's interesting uh, pete i so appreciate your comments and um when it comes to music and songs i'm 
totally different because um, I like to I like the lyrics. To me, it's poetry set to music, and uh, you know, and the relationships, and you know, what have you during as the song is being performed. And I'm just getting so into the lyrics. And the music to me supports the lyrics. And it seems like in your case, it's just the opposite. It is. And there's nothing wrong with that. And man, to the benefit of our viewers, and we've said this before, uh, that, you know, our our viewers are getting perspectives, you know, in, in monthly from three different perspectives. And a lot of times three totally different perspectives. And that's what's so great about, I feel, about what we're doing. Because if we all agreed 100% of the time, then what's the sense in even, um, you know, pursuing this? But I, I appreciate your comments. We'd and, be boring. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's the last thing we want to do is be boring. So <laughs> good conversation. Let me move on to the next one here. We have a a few more really cool images. So we have, this one is really kind of cool. This is This is one of those... The title is Gossip Hour, and I'm going to pause for a minute so you can kind of all maybe get a, an idea of Gossip <laughs> Hour. What might All right. Be. And here's what it is. Oh. <laughs> nice work on that. I just love this one. I'm going to jump into this one first because I yeah. just love this one. First of all, you've got just a beautiful color harmony throughout here. And again, we were talking about mats and things, and I think this is a, a really good example of how to take some of the brighter colors and make it work. It's there. It's supportive. It doesn't take over. If you'd have gone with the bright yellow uh, up here, it would have been. Let me get my little pen tool here. If you'd have gone with the bright yellow up here, it would have been too much. But I think this is just done well. The choice of of key line is done very well. But look at the conversation that these two are having. This gossip. They're so close. You just you know they're having this little coffee clutch, as my dad used to call it, and they're having this conversation. Who knows what they're talking about? Who knows if they're not ready to to kill each other or they're sharing recipes, but simple lines, the lines of the flowers, these guys just kind of stay together. Even the little, I think the support of the, really the very little of the circular pattern in this scene um, just kind of balances the, the pattern here balances with the, the open spot down here. Um, the color harmony is as simple as it is, is just very striking, very, just, really lovely i think it's a really strong image pete what's your thoughts oh gosh it's yeah all of that um god and then you know i just i'm just uh really enamored with how that reflection is uh on i don't know what kind of bugs those are gossip I, I i don't know but gosh the it, the highlight has been handled so well on to give that roundness and they almost feel wet um and it, you know, as you, you you complimented on on the play with the the flower, you know, directing attention to them, and just how they're kind of interwound. Um, yeah, so much to enjoy. I really don't really have anything. I think I could add to make this any more sensational than it is. Rick, anything you want to add? Yeah, you know, there was so much thought that went into this conceptually and and the execution. I am so impressed with the uh, with the presentation not necessarily the color but the long vertical um presentation to me mimics the bodies of the bugs yeah agreed mm -hmm. that's really cool let me ask you guys a question minor minor thing but that's what we were talking about before was all these little points this area of the scene is probably the lightest area. Would you dark? Would you darken this area at all to be more into this orangey tone? Or I would be afraid okay that, it, with how it is? that it would muddy it up. And there's enough contrast, both color contrast and tonal contrast from the bugs to the background. It, it, that really isn't a big deal for me. Yeah, me either, Jeff. Because I mean, it it just stands to reason that the outer edges of petals are closer to light. And so for right. me, that would make more sense that they'd be light. And as they fall in there, but yeah, I, I, it's so strong, you know, for me that I'm just locked into the gossip hour that they're having that I, you know, uh, I didn't even notice. And I mean, and if somebody had a concern, I mean, I could appreciate it, but I don't know that it would really affect me to, you know, wouldn't hold your score deduct, back any. to deduct anything on it. No. Right. Well, good work maker. I think this is just lovely. Absolutely lovely. 
Hey, another thing, I was going to take a quick second. I forgot I was going to mention this before. We've taken all of the different months shows and there's new gallery page on the website show galleries you can go and see um each month that we've had a program and you can see what images or mostly i did it because several of you have said hey what image did i enter last october so then, now you can go back and look at the galleries and see what this what's up there and have some fun with that so public service announcement all right we now have uh after the storm. Pete, thoughts, please. Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of taking it all in here and going, wow, that's super cool to be able to get uh, all of those storm clouds and then finding this old old uh, homestead or whatever it is. I'm assuming that's out on the prairie. Um, yeah, I you know lots to enjoy here with you know with the the solitude that that's going on here too with what must have have must have been going on uh, back in the day. Um, a couple of things. Uh, let's see. I, I first of all, I also like the the panoramic view. But again, we got a lot of dynamic range here, and we do want to watch. And I know Mother Nature and clouds. Uh, you know, you do want to watch those bright areas in the clouds just again, um, to just take things away from somebody having, you know, potential issues with it. And we have tools to make that really easy to do, you know, nowadays. And I mean, if you fill that in, I'd never know, I would never know that it was bright there. If you didn't show that to me, I wouldn't go, gosh, that cloud would be just so much better if it had a bright area right in here. <laughs> right. If only right. there were some bright areas right there, uh, that would be uh, that would be so much better. So, you know, it's just, it's just watching out, you know, for those, but then also, I don't know if, you know, you're trying to pull additional detail out. So you kind of got to watch even what happens in, you know, in the, the darks and the transitions, you know, with skies are always, they're always tricky. So it's hmm. like, I don't know, maybe even if you brought it down, cause you're in panoramic here, uh, just to eliminate potential, areas in this pure blue sky that can give that, uh, that, Im that impression, but, um, yeah, lots to enjoy about it. Uh, like the time of day, give direction of light. Uh, there you go. Jeff's helping me out there. Uh, and just see what that is. Cause you're still in that panoramic. Uh, but now, you know, blue sky in my experiences is always a, an area that can somewhat bring challenges, whether it's, banding or other types of uh, of issues and so since you had so many clouds i mean it's another one of those like gosh i wish there was blue sky above those clouds i wouldn't even think about that so um that's at least what i have for you on that and um i'm it'd be interesting i'll let rick i what do you think on the presentation there rick with that um, blue? yeah you know a, a couple things I'm just having a little difficulty enjoying the presentation, but that's not a that's not a big deal for me. Two things: um, if we don't do this at, at least a couple times in each of our shows, then we're not we're not doing our job, right? <laughs> that's right. Black and white, exactly. And then <laughs> and then, and then uh, uh, reverse it. Uh, there you go. And then now, can we do a? horizontal uh, oh yeah flip there you go there you go and no one had ever you know what i appreciate difference. what i appreciate that uh, the maker was very uh wise to make sure that there was a uh, separation or that the roof was not uh on a tangent point with the uh horizon yeah good that's a good call because it gives that building its own little the darn good and call. distance between and then even these two other trees are here a nice little touch yeah yeah yep. and i think there's a story here that's very strong and i don't know that i think all the extra clouds are are not necessary um i just think we've got a great story and those are really cool clouds but i think if we just leave it at a, a kind of a crop like one more time there jeffrey can't get it um I would even just bring it in so we're not seeing any more of the sky. So we're staying right here in this storm, this impending doom 
Um, there's plenty of omin ominous. Is that a good, a good enough word? Plenty of cool clouds to tell the story that this little house is in 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 the in the neighborhood for trouble, so to speak. Um, I don't know. It's just that's just me. I just think the clouds are cool, but there's enough of them to give us the same story without yeah. having to show all of that. Um, you know, when I see this image, the first thing that comes to my mind in terms of titles, uh, Little House on the Prairie. Yeah. Well, there's that story, too. We've talked about titles. When you can pull in something in a story that, just like Rick said right there, where it's immediately what human being doesn't know of that program, that story, right. that all of a sudden there's the whole story as much as you need of that story in this picture by just that little title. Yep. So that's pretty cool. So, Maker, hope you don't mind we played, but we played. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Color image of this. There was so much blue in the whites of the grays of the clouds that it was. It just didn't look natural. The other thing to keep an eye out for, too, is I know it's easy to go in and sharpen images, but clouds, and I only say this because somebody said this to me years ago, clouds don't have sharp edges. So if you're sharpening your images, you usually don't have to sharpen your sky because um, if the clouds end up having sharp images, sharp edges, that's going to pull a judge to look at those and say, yeah, that's, that's not right. So keep that in mind too. Uh, yeah. That's when you get that micro contrast going, something doesn't look right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, nice. But I think, you know, just some ideas there for the maker to, to go ahead and play with that and maybe come up with something a little different there. All right. So we now have, we did that one here is. So you guys do that every time you always are finding a, an image that gets flipped in black and white. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. it, oh, it happens two, three times a show. Oh, okay. And and because I like that, because I love the black and white, you know, Pete, that you know that feeling. Yeah. Um, I'm quick to just what? say black and white. Yeah, and Rick will say, "Okay, stop with the button, stop with the button." <laughs> this one is called "Immersed in Nature's Music." Now that's a story, there, guys. Mm -hmm. Get rid of the crop to if it'll let me do it. No, why won't let me get? This is fun stuff with. Uh, Zoom as I can't get rid of the crop tool. There we go. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Rick, you want to jump at this one? Yeah. Um, I, I like the exposure in terms of the softness of the water, you know, the longer exposure. Uh, a couple things that are, uh, I think, need to be addressed. Uh, bottom left corner, you know, we have some of that. It looks like it might be part of that uh, walkway or deck or whatever uh, that could either be toned down or taken out. Uh, the the uh, foliage on the bottom right corner, I feel, could be toned down quite a bit. You know, those are areas that are really pulling us out of the out of the image. I noticed too that we have a you know a human uh, the subject matter here. Uh, almost get the feeling that the individual is looking at the camera. And I would, you know, if, if there's other frames that were taken, maybe an image where the subject is more engaged with the scene itself rather than uh, looking towards the um, you know the, the captures and or the photographer as well as here you know toning it down um probably even that little bit of blue sky up there too is pulling yeah out. yeah mm -hmm. i'm sorry i don't mean to be too harsh but these are just things that you know just come to me just struck right came right out at me right away Anything is, else? You, you is think? that is that flare that we're getting kind of along the tree lines right too? Yeah, that uh, something. I, I'm gonna guess that's lens flare. I I don't know. I mean, obviously, I know, yeah, I don't assumptions, know. Assumptions, but I'm just looking at the highlights on the water going to that, trying to figure out where the sun, and that's just what it seems to be something. It it doesn't look like it. There'd be like mist or anything at the time of day. And yeah. I'm not seeing it anywhere else except for right in that. And it seems to be in line with the, yeah. with where and, the and, light's coming from. And going with what you're saying, <clears throat> Pete, time of day. What do you guys think about the time of day? I, I kind of feel it's it's really uh, not the optimum time of day, I guess. Well, that's, that's what gets to be tough with the landscape. I mean, it's a beautiful scene. I like the longer exposure to get the water moving, show some good action, good movement to the scene. But when you get... The bright light, you get harsher shadows. Uh, they handle the exposure well, but it it's I don't know as 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 we're programmed, especially um, uh, landscape photographers and such, we're looking for more of the softer, friendlier light. Um, beginning of the day, early yeah. afternoon, you kind of have you, to kind of look. Zoom it, zoom it in. 
Jeffy, well, just a little bit, as particularly on the subject, I'm seeing a comment where the, the subject is looking at the water. They're looking kind of down at the water. Okay. And I think and like they gave, they gave the time as ten as ten a.m. The big pardon. The maker says the time was ten a.m. Oh, yeah. 10 a.m. Hey, yeah. Jeff, as you're zoomed in, just move right to the middle of the image, right? So zoom in. Let's see what it looks like without the guy. Like I, I almost like the way that water, like the exposure, uh, like. I don't know. I, I really enjoy that. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Cool. I mean, maybe that's just me, but you know, sometimes the image is within the image sometimes. Right. But, right. But I, I, I almost feel that like, wow, that's super cool right there. Uh, you know, with the long exposure at, you know, you know at this time of day is not probably something we normally see. And it seems to be, yeah, even over here on the, over on the right hand side there, even where it's just kind of fallen into that first bit of rapids is kind of, like that whole image right in through there. You know what, Pete? What you're talking about has taken it, and I, I agree with you. It's taken it from being a a, a landscape or a scenic to uh, an abstract almost. Yeah, yeah. I you know I I, I don't know. I mean it it just it, it leaves itself. I mean even what the title that what was the title the music or something of. Oh, sorry. It's uh, what was. Uh, Immersed, immersed in nature's music. Yeah, like so I think that is referring to the the person standing there, right? But you could immersed. be immersed as the viewer with everything viewer, that's yeah, going on, right. or, or even what's going on with the you know with the water. I, I'm just, you know, I there's there's something to enjoy in here. I just think maybe we're seeing too much of it to start with. Yeah, sometimes the grand landscape is maybe not the best. Whoops, what's happening here? Don't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, all of a but, sudden, this it, yeah, there's lots to there's I, I think there's 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 lots to enjoy. I mean, I, I can appreciate it was a stylistic choice of what the human subject in there and and all of that. And you know, I wasn't quite sure where they were looking at either, you know, as as Rick had pointed out. But again sometimes we don't have the luxury to just look and go well no he is actually looking you know at it it i mean at first glance it it, it didn't look like it to me that they were you know looking at the water either so right right well that's the kind of thing and you know little things they look at it more um there's a little bit of whatever's down here in the corner if it's a part of a wall that you're looking over or sidewalk or something it's just little things like that that pull your eye away from you know, when I walk up to a scene, I'll say, okay, what am I trying? What's What caught my eye? What is the point of view, the, the central point that that I needed to, that caught my eye to bring me here? And then how do I support it with the elements around it? But by that same token, those elements around it can be um, can be distracting. So you have to look at every element. And that little trick, like, uh, like Pete mentioned earlier about flipping the image um, upside down, which is, if you remember, those of you who have done view cameras, we know this is how we had to compose in the, putting our heads under the dark cloth and we'd open the shutter and this is what it would look like upside down. Your brain kind of <laughs> whacks out, but you start looking at the patterns and the colors and the textures and direction of things before you see the pretty flowers and the faces and such. And and when yeah. I do this, what do you, I mean, the first question I have myself, what am I seeing that is not helping this image? And again, not to reiterate it, but we talked about the corner up here, the sky, just things like that that will uh, pull the the viewer's eye away from what we want them to see. So you have to just take a split second more, and um, that makes sense. Okay. Jeff, you're taking way too much time per image here. I know that. <laughs> I was just going to say, what the hell? i got to stop and move on. That was that was Jeff Cliffy, not me. I know. I, I made. I made a note. I made, he did I, say. I mean, he did say. Are you Are you grading us, Cliff? I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes. A strike one there. So for some reason, hey. I, I'm I'm behaving, Cliffy. You hey, are, I, Cliff. Yeah. I signed your paycheck, man. Oh, hey. you know what? Hey, we'll we'll ten times it, Cliffy, and it'll still be zero. <laughs> what were we saying about Fubar? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> okay, here's a good one. You're gonna have fun with this one. This one is called Lost. This one's really cool. It's yeah. really cool. Yes, uh, it's really, really, really cool. So uh, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna, Pete. I'm gonna have you talk about. It, but let me start with this. 
question because this is one that comes up a lot when I work with people and, and I see it in competition. Many, many times in PPA competition, the minute we see black areas of no detail, automatically we they lose points and they rule it out. What's your thoughts on this image with that having said that? Well, Jeff, as a black and white guy, I'm someone that's going to subscribe that you need to have a true black and a true white to have full tonal range. And I think having a very dark gray, almost black, and something that's very light, almost, well, that's not quite white, actually works to give that full yeah. tonal range here. Yeah. Um, uh, so much to enjoy. I mean, the only thing that I'm going to point out on this, because it seems so like just nailed down is going to be this. And I know that was there, right? I can totally appreciate that that little imperfection was there. And I, one right. of the things I'm working at is embracing imperfection, but <laughs> it's there. Um, and like everything else is so literally pristine other than the footsteps of the subject going. Um, I'm just trying to imagine things and I, can't imagine that something would a comment first of all i could totally see this image being challenged for good reasons um and so in a challenge then it's going to have discussion and at some point through that discussion somebody i feel is going to make reference to that yeah um but wow uh I, I, this is just incredible right i, um, I would be one of those to challenge it yeah to bring i would it too to bring out know, whatever the story. I'm bring sorry, out. Pete. I did. I don't think I let you finish. I'm sorry. Oh no, I was going to say I'd absolutely be one of those to to challenge that up too. Um, and this is another one of those. Wow, this could go either way, right? Black and white or color. But I like the the stylistic choice to to do this in color. I I really like this a lot. Yeah, me too. Um, gosh, I'm really taken with this image for many reasons. Um. Uh, First of all, the composition, because what, uh, yeah, the colors to me is better. Uh, more better. Okay. More better. Gooder. Um, <laughs> here's the deal. Lost. Now, this is, to me, is where the title just really sends the image because of the, of the mental, visual thing that you get with it. You know, it would be easy to argue, oh, my gosh, the subject is bullseye. And it should be because the the subject, the title lost. If the subject was down here heading this direction, then the subject is not lost. It has some place to go where the subject is in the center lost. I don't know if I should go this way. I don't know if I should go this way, this way or this way. So compositionally, this thing is dynamic. Plus, it has such a vintage quality to me in the in the execution it, this this almost looks like a, a a 30s a 1920s or 30s type of a capture because of the uh, the shallow depth of field that you know i'm not used to seeing in in uh you know in the technology that we have now so i, I hope what i'm saying is making sense but i'm really really taking it. and the presentation is just right perfect for me yep Totally agree. Everything you said is just awesome. And it gives us, gives me that feeling. Like you say that 1920s movie in the desert with the, uh, in Saudi Arabia desert or something in the Sahara of the people trekking across a couple of little things. There's one little spot here, minor, minor things, but it's just asking for a little tension, whatever. There's one little spot here, minor. Yeah. See, it won't let me get out of Photoshop. And then like Pete mentioned this up here, other than that, um, I think it's fantastic. Your matte color, the choice of the liner, everything is just right. You on. know, the other title that's running through my head is 20 past six. <laughs> <laughs> just with the shadows of the, of the <laughs> clock yeah. bit anyway. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. An image called majestic. Ooh, wow. Mm -hmm. Neat placement on, um, probably a drone shot not saying that because i know but you never know out there in the desert you can have these views from another part of the canyon but really tall ladder regardless if you can be, <laughs> yeah or if you have some lifters on your forerunner you can get on the roof um but yeah what a what a absolutely majestic capture of this rock formation uh the the 
Even the sunlight is just really giving us some wonderful shape and texture. Nice job on getting the balance of the detail in both the highlights and the shadows. And then having this little cap, if you will, the mountain in the background with the clouds, what a lot of depth this creates. Beautiful sunset colors, and then even leaving it cool tones in the shadows, which this very much happens in this time of day. So uh, almost not quite, but almost a square uh, format is just really giving us a lot of power. I like that you left us some room here. And again, I'll see how it might be. Pete, what, how do you, what do you want to add to this? So I lots to enjoy about it. And maybe I'll be kind of the crazy guy to even suggest it, but I'm like on, does it need the sky? I, I almost find the sky kind of distracting to it. Uh, I, I, I really, cause the center, the, the center of interest is here is right. Smack telling us or whatever. But I, you know, I was just wondering because in those, again, those clouds are awful bright up there or maybe just, or maybe just crop to the top of that other peak that's in the background. Well, I don't know. I mean, that works for me, but the, like the, those big bright highlight up in that left-hand corner, especially the dark mat just pulls me out of that. Up over uh, here. Yeah. Yeah. And then those other bright clouds right there. So maybe right just at the top of that back peak. Like right there? Yeah. Well, you see, we st again, those clouds for me is still, you know, problematic. But I, I you know, I, I'm, you just, could, you could I'm just, I'm just, I'm just me. I, I just really <laughs> want to enjoy that. Well, Pete, that's that. why we called you. Because if you were anybody else, we wouldn't have bothered. <laughs> well, I just like, like, I don't know. Do we need to see the sky? I mean, I know that that's probably a cardinal sin on landscape, but I mean, but do we? I, I, I don't know. No, uh, but because I think that it... that formation is so freaking incredible. Um, that I, I don't know. When I look at this too, is I, I when I cropped it before, not having it in there, I, I think was fine. But this creates, I, I think, almost a perspective of size of what this piece looks like compared to a mountain range. Yeah. And the way this sits, I like that it's right above it. It's almost like it's you capped it off. And I mean, almost like it's a hat, but just to kind of give you the, the variation of um, the distance, the size, what's in front of us and so on. So um, and that cloud in, in a, in a uh, illustrator or landscape category, you could easily just deal with those clouds and do what you need right. to do. So. Right, right. So I'm just reading a message that Michelle put. Michelle, is this is this uh uh your daughter's? We have a longtime PPC member, and then uh, her her man is also part of our group now. But the, her daughter has been entering the last couple, and it's just what is she 20, 21? And man, She's is she 20. 20? She's her, 20 and it was the previous image of the sand dunes. That was oh, hers. This, okay, that was hers. Oh, that's just that's going to sail. That's just she has absolutely. dynamite. Yeah. All right. It's original too. That's what's so cool. You don't see somebody in in sand dunes with somebody in there, and then like just tiny too. That was a lot. That's, that was the story. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That we now have totally changing points of view, Mister Nuthatch. Rick, why don't you dive into this one? Start yeah. off. You know, um, really nice image. I mean, good uh, exposure as I see it uh, on the bird, nice and crisp. Um, unfortunately for me, you know, we've got an issue with the background. Yeah, it's uh, uh, out of focus and there's some dimension to it. But, you know, we've got this uh, competing color contrast between the, the bluish or the cool tone of the bird against the warmer <laughs> Uh, tones of the background and then the reds you know that are just really pulling our attention uh i you know it might be totally natural the way that uh, that it was shot but i i think if we just had that that green background without you know the foliage the flower and the in the i guess petals or flowers whatever back here i think it'd be a much stronger image uh, you know the the main subject uh, is really competing with the with the uh, background, but, uh, you know, I don't mind the tight crop. I think, uh, you know, it adds to the impact of the image. It's just these other concerns that I pointed out that um, are unfortunate for me. Pete? Yeah, well, to build on what you're saying there, Rick, uh, 
Could it be because, I mean, that surface area of the image uh, with all that color contrast back there is roughly the same size or maybe more than than the bird. And so that is, at least for me, that because it's occupying such so much of the of the image, it competes as I guess what we'd say is for center of interest, right? What's our what is our center of interest? Is it what's going on behind there or the birds? So there, it it competes for attention. Um, for me, I do compositionally like you know how the bird kind of goes into that almost that Nike swoosh type <laughs> shape. Um, but yeah, um, I you know I don't know what you would do to change that. Is this another one that maybe? I don't know if black and white would do it because of that flower is going to go into really light tones back there. And we're going to be in that same situation with the size of it versus the size of the main subject. Well, well, well it does kind of take away the potency. It does. Do, yeah. I guess, I guess it goes on the, on that. Yeah. Well, and I'll add to that. I think, I mean, the, if you look at the bird and the tree trunks, stunning image, wonderful capture, great tonal range. The, like you said, the pose. So the bird is cool. And again, there's that line to enter it in a PPA competition, the color version, or even this, the judges are going to mention that there's a lot of distractions with the background. Imagine those aren't there. Now, yes, you can take that stuff out of there if you're just going in most of the regular categories, not repotage. But just imagine this image with just the tree trunks, the bird, and, and just a plain green soft background. This would be absolutely a killer image with those kind of things. And, and I say that mostly to just as you're shooting – and especially if you're thinking about competition, just definitely, definitely pay attention to the background to um, to be able to, to realize, um, you know, what we're saying, that as pretty as those flowers are, they're asking for so much attention, it's pulling the viewer's eyes away from, uh, from the actual subject, I guess, if you will. Another thing I'll say, and this is just kind of one of those picky things, the green is a very strong, yellowy, uh, warm green. The matte is a cool green, kind of fights with it a little bit, minor detail. But if you were a little bit more color coordinated with this green, I know again that sounds like a like it's picky, but when in the days of when scoring was done from zero to hundred, which is or excuse me, sixty five to hundred, which is what we're doing at the state competition, those a point or two there that the judge will look at and maybe deduct in their mind to, if you want to get those higher scores, little things like that. Music on the square. Let me clear those marks away. Rick, what's your thoughts on the music yeah. on the square? Yeah. I like the the uh, placement of the subject, you know, compositionally. We got a nice leading line that's coming into the subject. Uh, secondary elements in the background. Uh, you know, I guess it could be argued that, uh, you know, they support their kind of a diagonal secondary element to the to the subject. And that's fine because it, you know, shows the, the human interest. Uh, for me, um, I think we have a concern with lighting. You know, it, we've got a little bit of an overhead type of a lighting that, uh, you know, certainly uh, illuminates the subject's hair. But because of the direction of the light, we've got kind of the socket uh, of the eyes, the dark areas of the eyes. Uh, you know, we, we can either work with that, uh, you know, if we're going to be using maybe some flash equipment or I don't know, it appears to me that it's an overcast type of a, of an environment. So I don't know that how much good reflectors would do in that situation, but, uh, uh, you know, when it comes to musicians and he may be interacting, he may be playing, but, uh, when I photograph musicians, I, I, a lot of times, as a matter of fact, most of the times, I'll photograph and I'll just ask him, just go to it, man, and play and then capture the images and uh, uh, either adjust the subject to the light uh, or let the light, you know, or manually adjust the light to the subject. You know, and again, because we have an outdoor environment, uh, you know, we're in a situation where uh, we have to work with, uh, with the, the light we have or bring in some kind of supplementary uh, lighting, but uh, uh, really a neat concept. I think it's just for me the main concern or issue is uh, lighting. Let me throw this question at both of you guys since you both do a lot of portraiture. If this was in, if you knew this was in an illustrative category, would that be as big of an issue? The light in the eye? If this is in a portrait category, I agree, but what if this was sent in as in an illustrative category? 
What do you well, think? you know, here's the deal for me. Light, whether it's uh, a landscape, whether it's a still life, whether it's a portrait um, or, or uh, uh, photojournalistic or reportage or whatever you want to call it, light is intended to sculpt a subject. Right. right. So uh, my short answer, yeah, it, it would be a concern. <laughs> That's all you needed to say. I, yeah, yeah I, I I agree with you, Rick. I mean, I think lighting needs to have character and personality. I, I mean, I don't need to see necessarily see a catch light in his eyes, but that's pretty dark. Yeah, right there. And uh, the term, right, uh, Pete and Jeff, that we heard all the time, raccoon eyes. Yeah, that's yeah. a good example right there. Of course, the other thing, like I, I do like the 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 title of this and how we've done the. Uh, musician in a square presentation and the the color harmony lots to enjoy but I, I will tell you what what caught me initially is right down here i'm like something doesn't look right and then as i'm looking I'm like his feet are tack sharp he's tack sharp all the way through but the ground the ground is not sharp the ground is uh, like the plane of folk like the plane of folk like this should be sharp all the way across shouldn't it yeah. i mean the yeah. physics of of right. light you know, even, you know, to, to come up, I mean, uh, in, in this, I would expect us to, to see that, but this right here. And then as I start to, you know, to look at it, I'm like, well, it almost looks like lights coming in from this direction, but on the structure here, it seems to be coming more down. So there I've got, I I just have a lot of visual confusion as far as the light goes, right? And and um, you know, we've been discussing light with you know in his eyes and 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 everything else. So um, I, I guess for me and just you know, it's it's got some visual. The lighting is is causing some issues, but I for the life of me cannot understand why his feet would be sharp and all of the rest of this is just soft. I that I, that doesn't make any any sense. And then it, it look at, I'm like, well, I'm not seeing any, you know, contact under that. I'm not saying that it was dropped in, but it, it just, something doesn't look right to me there. Yeah. I totally agree. I saw that when it first came up and I was wondering what you guys are thinking, because it, it does give it the if, illusion of being cut out. But even if, if the uh, photographer just softened all of that and didn't do the feed, it's still a little bit too obvious uh, just as what these guys have been mentioning. So um yeah so all right but cool cool concept love the title love the color harmony and everything that that's been put into there i mean but yeah if you've got a shot of him if he's playing where he's somewhat turned his head to where you've got some light you know to illuminate those eye sockets a little bit yeah i, I think you're onto something yeah because the whole theme is is just outstanding and you know very believable sitting in the a public spot playing for the folks and yeah very very good like the off center kind of a placement especially with the cello pointing back towards the left. It's got a lot of things going for it. So maker, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give up on it. Um, work on some of this to, uh, but it's, it's going to be kind of tough if it is feet are sharp and the ground is not sharp. If, if you did drop the person in the scene, whatever, you're going to have a tough time getting the ground to be sharp if it's not and so on like that. So just keep that in mind. Like there's so many cool images and what you guys are doing here. Like, this is awesome. This is really amazing. Thanks for inviting me to be part of it. Well, wow. absolutely. Well, that's good. Well, and I, I'll just say, and I don't want to, I'm not going to take credit for it, but we've had that I know of two of you regulars who have done well, I think taken some of the things that our, our guests have shared with you on their images over time. And two of you have become um, PPA masters here in this last year. Um, Owen Jones, Michael, am I missing anybody who's gotten a degree from the last year that's been a regular? You're missing me. I was one of oh, those. You're, oh, you were this past year. Uh, Michael, <laughs> I, I got it last year too. But no, yeah. no. Um, I, I was just going to comment. You know, once again, thank you so much. Thank you, Pete, for uh, joining in tonight. And that really, oh. but everything. You know, I, I always look forward to. Uh, I haven't been able to hit every one of these ones live in that, but fortunately tonight I was able to hit live and and really enjoy the the commentary. I learned so much from you know, all, all the feedback that you guys provide to um, every image, whether they're mine and then the other ones too in that. But um, t tonight has been wonderful. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, you got a uh, goat on your back. 
<laughs> those goats. <laughs> those goats are crazy up. Those, those goats up in the mountains are crazy. They're, they're, they're crazy. You know, Michael told us a story about that a couple weeks ago when he was here. <laughs> and uh, 2.4 million views. Yeah, I was just going to say. And and did you know that he connected with Patreon and he's gotten a dollar for each view? <laughs> Two point four million dollars. <laughs> so, Michael, about that loan we were talking about, <laughs> we only need fifty thousand, so it's probably no. Big for you. It, 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 it's crazy what the social media would do with the, um, you know, when you have something that also get, becomes popular. But uh, it, it, it it was a fun morning. But I don't know that I came out with two point four million dollars in my pocket. <laughs> but uh, but it, it was a great time. So, well, but, even if it was two point two million, I mean. Right, right. right. <laughs> I'd, I'd be happy with the point two part of it. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving yep. on. Go, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys go. Yeah. And once again, thank you, everybody. We have an image called "No Guts, No Glory." Pete, what you think? Whoops. Well, I uh, I'm just kind of taking it in here at first. Uh so I love the story um and what what's going on here but I, i'm trying to go it feels like maybe there's a little motion blur which i would expect obviously something's happening here but then i i see you know the riders you know number <laughs> and all that seems to be sharp so um it, it just was kind of messing with me here a little bit but um i'm assuming this is reportage um do we know what you know what, yeah that's the things we haven't done any category you just don't you, just, you just don't know we don't um, know but i would guess that's how it would probably be ended. yeah I, so i'm gonna just assume it's reportage and i'll speak to it as as being reportage so um so it's a great moment um uh, actually uh, love the fact that you uh you found a writer that's in red and white you've got the red and white signage and bullseyes uh the shooting gallery right behind them that's kind of an interesting concept there <laughs> um so you know great story and then of course compositionally you know kind of leading you know right into it um i think if i could offer suggestion because you can crop i might crop in tighter oh, where's our where, i gotta go find my thing here like i don't know that we need to see all of this over here i don't know that that's really telling the story. I mean, we've got lines in the grass taking us down here and all that. So I don't know that we need that. Um, also, you can dodge and burn. Um, and so I might just bring, you know, a little, you know, a little of the 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 white down, um, you know, to do that. But I mean, you got a, you got a great story. Again, initially, I was you know, confused with the expression, whether that, uh, whether the writer's, you know, sharp or not, but being able to read the bib and all of that. And when I say, yeah, no, it, 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 it should be sharp there. Um, and the only other thing is, I don't know if you can just burn a, a little bit of, you know, just a little bit around that because you can burn, but um, that's the, what I see in it. Yeah. I think you gotta be careful in that burning of, bright grass and waters you'll just get a gray yeah it'll go darker but you'll get a gray and most experienced judges will pick up on that real quick so just a gradient in either lightroom or photoshop will allow you to go in and adjust the tones of the highlights and shadows of the gradient so you could you could create the proper contrast by doing that but um i think you had a great story here it's good there's just some little things that you know again it is if it is reportage uh, photojournalism you got a good story going on but it's also one of those that the impact still a, a very much part of a the elements of design and at first you see it and you go wow what a great capture it's it is sharp and crisp but i see the expression on the face has got a good story but then it kind of stops right there i know rick goes on to talk about the difference in uh, um lasting and uh, uh fleeting impact and that's kind of what it was for me at first it was like wow interesting nice capture and then in the story just kind of fades a little bit so i'm not thinking it would be a terribly high scoring image um rick anything you want to add more to that no you guys really covered uh, my thoughts as well so. we have riding the thermals pete talk to um, me um 
whoop there he goes up zoomed it out i bumped the freewheel <laughs> <of> the <muscles. laughs> hurry up pete tell me real yeah, hell, well <laughs> yeah well let me see here um i enjoy the bird i don't know that i enjoy this um i get that that's probably part of what was in the in the scene and then because the rest of this is so dark back here i mean i see we got some details <laughs> this is definitely a distra- it's this is definitely distract like i mean if if i were if i were uh, like if 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 i were using your scoring system or whatever and people like i mean i'm being an average category on it um is is what it is because it, it it's just it's not speaking i guess maybe that's the impact it's not speaking like anything that just like just draws me in it's not you know i'm i'm trying to be kind um it just I'm not sure. I think the presentation actually, because we got so much dark, it just pulls us to the edges. So um, I don't know. Rick, help me out there. Yeah, there's, yeah. A lot of visual contrast to this as I see it. You know, the light background, uh, I'm sorry, the light mat, um, you know, uh, then the dark background. And then we have some uh, things going up. What's happening? <laughs> wow, know. that was magic. Yeah basically just the levels pal levels pal- okay well whatever the, you did there that the, changed yeah things. that made that made all the difference to me um, yeah i still i still have uh would have a concern with the bottom right corner uh and yeah that makes a whole lot of difference uh if we're going to keep this in i would definitely do something about working that down toning it down but the previous version i was just starting to outline this and you know that was barely being seen and in its the, its original uh, original presentation, this part of the bird was going definitely into the black background. So technically, those were concerns, but we, you know, there were just so many contrasting elements that weren't supporting the image. Uh, that that changes everything because now we've got depth to the image. Um, yeah, that bottom right hand corner still needs to be basically yeah. eliminated in my opinion but but adding that well, however you did that jeff uh that's basically pretty just, incredible just the levels palette and, and the, the mid-tones and then i did go into a uh, uh color um color separation in a sense and lightened up some of the moss and things in the rock to give us a little more character See, and, and the way it originally showed it looked to me like it was a, a an artist rendition to just have a black background and that's why i just couldn't understand what was going on in the bottom right corner and and then that's where i was seeing this faint um uh detail there and then when you change the levels in the color version it really came to life can you just crop that bottom right corner out jeff with the all the sure that guano is that what is that the proper name bird shit guano yeah (laughs) Well, you know, of course, I always look at it when you, what can we do? I mean, this is not the the, the 35 millimeter format, so I, I appreciate that. But anything, you, anytime you can change things up a bunch, I'm afraid if I go in this far, the bird's going to be too centralized. Right. Um, so giving it maybe this much room. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't know up. that we just need to see all of what we were seeing. Yeah. Let's put them just a little bit higher. Something like this, and then get rid of this rock yeah. here the background actually works real nicely because it is soft it doesn't have to be sharp the bird's sharp the bird's plenty sharp nice yeah. detail nice just nice texture in the wings even though it's very light a little bit of color on the, the back of its head there um so, so the bird has done very well but the background was just a little bit of course i always want to go into the black and white and see how that looks too because sometimes that will kill some of those issues with color background patterns and stuff that um, aren't helping they're asking for attention and for me this um going black and white and i'm even I'll try and lighten those greens a little bit to give it still some of that i almost feel you brought more detail out of the bird with whatever you did there too yeah yeah it was just lightening up the the uh, or something darkening the bird's white just a little bit to make it i mean it's it's there's a create a little bit of a shadow on the back of the on the back of this wing and body right here and a little bit on the neck so it gives us some roundness to the body of the bird and it just really brings the bird out even more from the background now one thing that i'll say is that the background was the bird was handled now the background was terribly underexposed 
and I'm just going to enlarge this. We can see what's happened as I see all the tech, oh yeah all the noise we picked up on the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Pixelization. That's not the word. Um, but this the lines of those are just those are color differences there. But look at the sharp edges, which that's not right. And look yeah. up over here and and maker. I'm not trying to be negative on this, but just, I'm just kind of pointing out that you got to be careful. Just because I could lighten that background just like that, um, that it wasn't. Uh, it's not always the answer. Um, but you can see what if it was exposed a little differently. Now, that was a tough one because you had a bird in sunlight and you had a wall in shadow. And if we go back to the original, that's um, a lot of dynamic range. Yeah, it's it's almost too much to do what I did there, but um, but just you know keep that in mind. And then also too, you know, I think it might be kind of cool if it was even cropped in a a long narrow like we like we showed just to kind of. And even if the if this was black like the background, and even if it was extended maybe even like this far. Maybe not quite that much. It just might give us something a little more unique, some motion from the left to the right. So Rick, just what would you, Rick, what would you do on the mat, Rick, when you've got such a dark, contrasty background there? What what would be a suggestion on a mat? Co I'm for oh, for my education here. Like like do you do you like how that is, or what would be a good suggestion at least for a color? Well, on, you know, if in my opinion. Tone, yeah, in my opinion, um, if we're going to have this heavy, dark theme going on, I would probably go with a, a darker, um, darker mat, because again, you know, we've got this um, light mat, then a dark area, then the light bird, and then we've got another value here. Uh, I just feel that if we went with a darker mat, the bird, and just eliminate this altogether, yeah. then you know, more than a natural wildlife image, to me, it would take on more of a an artistic rendition of the bird, not just a, a natural uh, wildlife type of an image, if if that makes any sense. But again, yeah, definitely, I'm, I'm concerned about the wing uh, blending in, you know, right. with the, with the black background. There's got to be some way that we can separate that. Well, even just going in like I did and, and lighten that background, even just a little bit, um, you know, just by all I did was use a, a levels layer and just lighten the midtones just a little bit. So we get just a little bit of separation there in the background. The yeah. bird and the edges of the wings stand out a lot yeah. right there. But you don't get you those don't... background elements separating the way that they were doing. Yeah, oh, that's true. <laughs> Technology is great, isn't it? Seeking a higher perch. Well, that's a great story right there. You just immediately see that the bird is coming in to looking for that branch to land on. It's above him, so a higher perch. Um, interesting capture. More times we see pictures of birds with the wings spread or or sitting folded down totally, but definitely an action version um, coming into the branches and coming into the a landing spot. We've got sharpness on this part of the wing. We've got sharpness on the head, but I don't think they're in the same plane because the front of the wing i'm guessing is between this point and this point going from here to there not left to right um and then the back of the tail here is sharp but the wing is definitely not sharp as moving and, and i'm unfortunately i'm seeing a lot of noise in that wing now judging we can't enlarge the image to look at it but i'm seeing this this uh um noise right here in the wing so just little things like that are going to keep it from going Higher. And then we talked earlier about the key line that's color coordinated, but it's right up against the image. So you can see it's probably about a two pixel key line. And it works down here in the dark blue, but we lose it over here. We lose it over here. So just watch that because you'll definitely get pinched on that one. Um, Pete, anything you want to add? Uh, no, I mean, you pretty much, uh, you know, hit all of the things. And then, you know, it just, I you've got some of these branches that are, super bright and again if they were just zipped out i would never know that they were not there right but you know because we've got this contrast this dark branch and then we get like this bright highlight here and of course then we're kind of all looking at that versus him going up into that perch but wow this right here that's just awesome on uh, on the light in the eyes uh Gosh, I almost got Rembrandt right lighting on this bird, you know. And I, <laughs> I, I do appreciate the the backlighting that you know that's coming across, but 
yeah i mean that's that's really incredible on there but you know there's just some some other things and i'm not sure what's going on right in here either one more thing i'll just throw at you and for something like this i think i would look at again this is not going to be in a reportage category so you can do these things in a wildlife or a landscape or whatever is i'd get rid of a lot of these branches and maybe just leave this one sharp one these maybe these yeah. two here where it's going to land and let it be very um isolated uh kind of thing like that so because we'd never know those branches weren't there yeah exactly mm -hmm. this is a red-tailed hawk i understand so yeah and they're beautiful beautiful animals but just a couple little things like that are just going to keep it from going higher anything you want to add to it rick no no uh serenity pete give, thoughts give, give jeff a big hand on that there was a big hand that was on the on the screen there uh yeah serenity uh definitely leaves me feeling you know peaceful and that 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 bluish uh peaceful and the the green feelings of it very serene um, it's very serene um i don't know that i'm enamored with the lighting i understand it is a serene scene but the light seems very flat to me and and maybe it goes back to that the conversation we were having about you know initial impact and fleeting and like yeah initially it's great but kind of like i'm just looking for some more you know visual you know visual interest um but we all see things differently but i i would love to enjoy this spot for sure do you think this needs i mean there's not really a focal point a landing point here I know a lot of times we'll see beautiful landscapes that really don't have that. But what do you think in this particular scene, guys? You think this needed something to be a little bit more specific to say, look at me? If there was only... Wait, let me guess. A guy on a boat, right? <laughs> Possibly... I thought you were going to say it. No, I thought you were going to say uh, a family, airplane, a family you group know, right float here. Plane. <laughs> float I think plane you're right. Good. I think you're right, Jeff. I think that's what where I was leading to. Like, God, I wish there was just something more just because we don't have the light to carry us into that it, it's overcast day and it's it's flat um you know we i mean there's lots to to enjoy but yeah you just kind of feel like you there's something more i wish that there was and maybe that's because you guys are making that comment yeah well maybe you could flash fill with the vivitar 285 <laughs> you probably need distance two. I think it'd be two two eighty fives. Two two eighty fives. Yeah, somebody mentioned it, fog would help the scene. A nice pair of it would, fog. It, would, it might take it might take a week for the light to hit the trees. Yeah, no kidding. That's what I'm thinking. That's why I need two of them. <laughs> Truckload of double A's. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Too far. I do like the composition and I like the color palette of the whole image and the presentation. I I think the panorama is is handled really well. You know, we've got. Uh, uh, the shoreline at, right about at the third. We have the mountain range pretty close to the third. So a lot of nice things going on. But uh, yeah, I, I share your concerns. All right, let Jeff do his thing here. And Now we're talking Ansel Adams. Well, if I go lighter in the cyans, I can get some of that misty look. I can't go too far in the mountains or I can go darker and bring out the mountains. I, I kind of like the lighter. Just gives it a little bit more of a moody feel. Yeah, because now the tree, the light on the trees is kind of you, you're getting almost uh, backlight. It, it they seem to have a little more personality to them. Yeah, but also what I what catches my eye is the lightest part of the scene are the clouds, and not that that's bad, but I think it pulls our eye up out of the scene. And when you drop into black and white, and all of a sudden the shoreline has become the focal point, and then drop where you put your tent, your little triangle over there. Um, that's the teepee. The teepee could go right there. A teepee would be awesome right there, and a horse stand there. That would be a heck of a story right there. Just some thoughts, Maker. We have one called Silent Guardians. Nice capture. Um, wonderful detail. Tough location to shoot in because there's so much texture. There's so much going on. Uh, I'm guessing this is the Badlands. It sure looks like it. Um, there's just so many different tones and textures and the detail and these rocks and those rocks are in the Badlands. Then you had the grass to it. Then you had the sky. There's a lot going on, but I think the makers handle it real well. I go right up this ridge here. Let me get my little pen tool here. If it's going to work for me, it's not going to work for me. I don't know why it won't let me get out of Photoshop. We try one more thing. Okay. 
imagine I'm drawing right here <laughs> on this ridge and it takes us right up to the peak, follow the ridge line both ways and come back down. Um, the mat's interesting. I kind of like that. We've, we've kind of done what the rules state, but left us just really more of an interesting that this scene goes on and on and on. The colors are nice. The red brown tones of the rocks, a little bit of the, the grasses have that fall kind of color to them. And then the sky is really outstanding. Um, nice, nice composition. Pete, add to that. Anything? Yeah. I drank some beer like right here <laughs> uh, back when I was in college. Uh, it, it sure looks like the Badlands of South Dakota. Uh, yeah. Uh, love the textures. Uh, I think the sky has been handled nicely here. Yeah. Um, and actually, yeah, what she did mention about a presentation. Jeff, let's just look at this it's in uh, in uh, your black and white here. Let's just black and white. What a great just, idea! Let's just Ooh. for giggles here take a look at that. Just poops and giggles. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> why not? Um, gosh, uh, because of the texture and the tone, uh, I think that that could play out really well on that too. I mean, that's a maker's choice on that but i do think uh you know i do think there's some drama that can happen yeah um, it's interesting same lighting but it just seems more dynamic in black and white yeah 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 well so anyway of, i like it what i was kind of thinking was what pete said that when take if you notice i took the blues and made the sky more ominous um and then brought the reds out in terms of whites and light grays on this on the rocks it makes the rock face stand out even more uh predominantly and even kind of almost gives us a focal point in this area right here and let's just follow that ridge with the nice shadows just a thought maker that maybe this is another possibility i always suggest fix your image the way you like it in color create a copy of it do it in black and white and just pop them on your screen side by side and just sit back and see which where your eye goes and see what because by just taking the color out of it your eye goes in a totally different direction then just naturally we're going to feed to the the hot spot down here on the ground. And then of course the white part of the sky. And when you take it into this direction, and even though we still have those white parts in the skies, we've lightened the color of the rocks enough that it pulls your eye into that formation and makes it even more dramatic down here with the yeah. whites, the sunlight hitting the shadows and so on. So, Great place though. Just, oh my gosh. You can't go wrong there. That's for sure. And Jeff actually zoom back out like that. Like, like zoom small. back. Yeah. Well, small. Because this is a this is another tip that you know that I've given is like when you look at things far away like that, then you'll actually kind of see things that pop out, you know, yeah. and you can see all these different little areas and like oh there's there's interest going on, and one of the things I see is this as it's popped out like this is that top right hand corner. And I zoom it back in, you get that one cloud in that top right hand corner, right? Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So uh, that's just one of those you know just to zoom in and or zoom out actually looking at it from a distance you know things will jump out and so that would cloud you, right there would you I, get rid I think of, i would get rid of that yeah i, I yeah. would at least this, because of where it's at you're right this this little area right here and this guy right here i think you're just pulling your eye unnecessarily and i think it'd be fine to let it all be this dark cloud up here yeah and i might even go in when i had it small i look at a couple things that catch my eye minor thing but look at this white light right here mm -hmm. not a bad thing because you got it but i would i would probably soften that at least maybe not get rid of it and then i would probably darken these white areas here a little bit of a path here here and this whole area here i would probably take those down uh and i use the word density because that's what we grew up on but half the people go density what does that mean lightness darkness um but uh yeah i think that might be something that would again bring us back into the main point there's so many great lines in here to, oh. to follow through on that it keeps you interested without getting bored of the scene there are questions about what do you think about the presentation? I like it. Um, it's absolutely supportive. It, if for nothing else, bottom line, it follows PPA's rules of Matt in a in a in a, in a stroke. Um, I like that it's a little bit darker to give us that feeling of a mat, even though it continues the image. I'm in favor of it. I think it's very cool. Pete, what's your thoughts? I I really I don't have any. Um, so I'll turn it over to Rick. I mean, I like it. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a fan of this type. I've seen it many times in uh, uh Okay, next. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh no, that's fine. 
do you think do you think, story and i'm sticking to it again <laughs> do you think that it's a <clears throat> excuse me a personal thing in your case i mean not a, not a good or bad but a per, or do you think overall it might not score well because well, to me it take, to me it takes away from the image uh and it almost creates a secondary image that we're being invited to view if you will um I think this is a strong enough image. You know, we talk about presentations and this and that. There are those that can be full bleeds. And I feel that this is one of them. Uh, Jeff, you remember last month with Tim Matheson? Yeah. There was an image that came up and we talked a lot about it and presentation. And we all came to the conclusion, forget the presentation, right. and print this on metal. Uh and oh, yeah. it just it was beautiful it would have been beautiful but uh um uh, yeah i certainly think this with a lighter mat like as a fine art type print i think absolutely would look dynamite too i because i like i see it both ways i see the you know the contemporary on it and i also see that also i, I don't want to call it gimmicky but when you start to to do that i don't I, I see rick's comment here too that you, i don't know that you really need it this image is so strong you know without it right but i do think just a you know not 255 white but a nice light presentation yep. on it i in that black and white i think just sings to me i totally agree so go back to this kind of thing and then have it be just that very very off white yeah, yeah. um border instead of the see the transparent one yeah that would be that would be cool. Because it's a strong image. It is, very. Smiling book. And just look for a quick second. Doesn't he look like he's laughing at us? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. That's what oh. he thinks about our comments. <laughs> I, dare, I dare you to say something about me. <laughs> Rick, you want to start off on this one? Yes. Um, you know, I like the the majesty of the of the the subject. Um the lighting to me is is kind of flat. You know, we've got the brightest areas in, in the background that's kind of pulling our attention, you know, and and, uh, and of course we talked about, you know, areas of contrast. So we have these uh, weeds that are coming up against the, the brighter area. But the biggest concern for me is it about a fourth or, a, or so of the image is the foreground that is really out of focus which of course, you know, we're going to have foreground, middle ground and background and we want to focus our attention on the image. Yeah, something like that, because, uh, you know, that foreground being so out of focus is really a distraction uh, for me. But see, just even something like that. Yeah, I don't mind it being a little soft in front because it does give us more of an isolation of this animal out in the wild with the shallower depth of field. But yeah, if you get too much of that, you got to be careful. Yeah, I see what you say. Yeah, so, stuff like that too. You need to watch for that because it does distract that one weed there that's just enough out of focus that it's more of a blur. But it's hard over on the right side. You get some that are that way, but you end to have the sharp ones in front. Of, I'd let that one be, but this one yeah. over here on the left. Um, These kind of images are so cool when they're backlit and you see that nice rim of light along the back and the, uh, you know, the antlers. Yeah. Be careful, maker, when you or anybody who's taking this comment into to heart when you crop in, you still kind of have to leave, I think, some um, figure where the legs are. Because, I mean, if you were to crop it all the way in like this, I don't think that feels as natural. Right. I don't know. That's just my thoughts if it needs. But if we still, even though you can't see the legs, we've left some imaginary space for those legs so that it doesn't look like it's just, you know, you don't want to crop it so it's just floating there. All right. Um, it doesn't work too well. Pete, anything to add? You know, old uh, Rudolph or Donner here and his smile. I mean, one of the things I say, you can't pose nature. So the fact that, that the maker caught this, I'm like, yeah. that's incredible, right? It, it, yeah. it truly is. But again, other things that I'm going to mention, it appears we have like black haloing going on around here and around here and then white 
haloing going through here. Something looks unnatural here in here in in here. And I I hate to beat up on that kind of stuff, but what it screams to me, at least what I've been guilty of, and this is why uh, that is it. I don't know if contrast is trying to be bumped up around around this guy or, you know, what to try to get the sharpening. But you got to be careful of that because then, you know, against the sky, you can see that. Now, a way you can fix it is you can actually use a clone tool and just sample the color and hit darker or lighter. Right. Uh, to, to follow along that, because obviously this is darker than than that point. So if you're doing that, it's not going to affect that. But you really want to be careful of that kind of stuff because you start to see it. And then like I would have just cropped this a little. See this line right at the top here to your presentation. See here we're darker, yeah. but then we got that one sliver of light of the sky. Like I just would bring it cropped down into this darker area here just to, you know, to eliminate those. But I mean, yeah, there's some great comments that, that, uh, that Jeff and Rick had. Uh, but again, it's so amazing that you caught this deer with this expression. I just think that's incredible. So um, nice job on that. But uh, those are the two cents that I have. That's your thoughts and you're sticking with them. All right. yeah, it's probably more like a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> that's Pete's 25 cents. And there you go. Yeah, yeah there you go. All right. This one is called Standing Alone. This is quite nice. Go for it. Jeff's like, can we see it in color? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that, Jeff. I had to. <laughs> oh, that's Man, funny. I, I, I wish I had thought of that. <laughs> my, well, I tell you, my, my dad's just laughing in his grave over that one. He used to always accuse me of... You can't just leave it alone. You've always got to do something different to it. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> Would you like to be a blue cast to it or an orange cast? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, first of all, it, the whole uh, composition is just a very strong. And you've got this nice leading line. Again, I don't have, for some reason, my paint tool isn't working. So you're going to have to watch my mouse here. Um, it Matter of fact, that was even a red mouse when we started. So I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> Um, nice line coming in on this little cliff right here. This the edge of this back part of the canyon. These lines all lead us right down this little bit of a road right here. It's a path leads us right into the uh, uh, monoliths there. Uh, even the striations in the dirt of the hill lead us up to that. Supporting and I love the depth going all the way back into the hills, the plateaus in the background. And look at the little bit of rain weather. The clouds are just soft enough that it pulls us in. Nicely, um, the the tonal range throughout is really outstanding. I mean, there's it, it there's there's a little bit of a white in the in the white of the skies, but all the way through the rest of the zones, look at the detail. And this is a very black rock. There's I mean, you can see the striations and the edges of it. Look at the ed, bottom of this little cliff right there. Um, nicely done. I I do like the presentation. I've kind of would love to have seen. I know we put the stroke in, and just me. I feel like when you start getting farther away from the uh, image, you're starting to divide it and give us sections to look at. And I would almost like to see this even half the distance to the goal there. And being on a white, I may even make it a little thinner. It looks like it's probably eight or 10, 12 pixels. Knock it down to two or three, even make it a little bit lighter. Minor, minor thing, because you just need to show it. But it's just it's just kind of catching my eye. But again, we're talking a couple of points, so to speak. Um, Pete, your thoughts? I don't even know that it needs a stroke. I honestly, I go. think that it just sits on there. Uh, gosh, that tonality, the black and white is just to die for. Like it's, it's incredible. I, I honestly, I don't know I, that I have anything other to suggest to you other than I don't know that you even need the stroke. Okay. I agree. Rick, what do you want to add? Yeah. Um, just one thing. If there's, if there's uh which I would, bet there is room on the file let's come down just a little bit because we got these tangent points right here mm -hmm. and right here on this uh circular element because they're oh, just right. touching the border if there's i mean and i'm not talking a lot i'm just just giving a little bit of space between this element here and this area here 
from from the uh so maybe you just bring the bottom of the print down to where the key line the keystroke is right right yeah yeah i think this is stellar i'd be proud if this was my image here and uh and even that title standing alone that's what we we're talking about earlier that's a great story i mean you've got this yeah. one piece that's so obviously different and it is standing alone great story stretch marks <laughs> yeah. Pete, what do you think Pete? uh well i love the title uh and what we're doing at i'm just trying to i mean as i as i look at it, i'm like in, can you zoom in on it i mean <laughs> i it kind of feels a little okay i didn't yeah obviously it's not pixelated but when it first came up it that that distance or whatever it was like i'm like wow it doesn't it seems to have a little pixelization um love the title uh color harmony not so sure i'm a fan of the presentation um i i realize that there's that tone and value in the image but i don't know that for me it's helping it be as successful and um i don't know that the time of day was maybe quite as right to you know bring out those textures it could be that's the only time of day that that you were there to be able to do it um you know but i think it feels more like you know about noontime type wow uh, i'm playing sorry <laughs> uh anyway because there's so many great textures there and to let the you know the light as i think rick said earlier you know sculpted i think there's an opportunity to have a lot of sculpting uh, that was going on there at perhaps a different time of day, but um, it's enjoyable to look at. All I was trying to do there, Maker, is just to, I, I think the color balance is not quite on. We've got a lot of a red in there, but the, the color of the trees are very much a, an interesting green. I'm just trying to use the levels palette and the black dropper, just finding a shadow and maybe correcting the color a little bit. I think this might be a little bit more appropriate for the 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 hills like that, that looks better i mean in my more, opinion the greens look a little bit more genuine there's a yellow green and a blue green of that tree and the color of the rocks are a little bit maybe it's a little too yellow but it seems to be just a little bit more on par with at least you know not to say that i'm right but i just feel like the other way here is just a little bit the shadows have a, a green a cyan green to it that are just i don't believe natural enough um, and that's something you get, you know, judges who have been judging for a while who understand color and things that can really pull the image down. And of course, wait, let's be, let's do a Jeff and see what's black and white doing. That's a little bit flat. Um, but you know, there's just different ways of looking at it, but I do think the color balance is just a little bit off, you know, the fine line there is it my taste or what's correct. And I don't mean to imply that what I'm doing is the correct way, but I do feel like it looks underexposed. Rick, would you have anything to add to that? Absolutely. Uh, Center of interest is what I'm kind of looking to see and to enjoy, and I, you know, I'm and not quite getting it. And because there's no real focal point, and you know, and you hear it argued, and, and sometimes it's a very, very, very valid that the whole image is the focal point. Right. Uh, I'm not sure that this is the case. Uh, you know, I just where do I land? as a center of interest and because there is no for me real center of interest the impact just wanes uh for me uh and it's it's very very fleeting yeah i have to agree with that i think it's beautiful textures nice lines and movement but it's again we talk about that impact it's it's at first it's like wow and then but there's nothing there to really pull you in and hold you uh on that so i think that's what that's kind of lacking right there so Boy, the maker probably going to say, okay, Rick, you're going to find a horse's head in your bed tonight. <laughs> well, actually, what I was trying to put a family on one of those little slopes right there <laughs> and make it a, an Avalos <laughs> piece. This is called Sunset Splendor. There is a black mat around it. Sorry, I get that thing keep up. There is a black mat around it, so it's just blending in with my black background of Photoshop. So figure there's a mat that's about this size around there, guys. Okay. Pete, thoughts? I uh, love the color uh, of this sunset splendor. Is that what you called it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, great. You know, gosh, the shadow details in this are just absolutely, uh, you know, amazing. Um, I like the, the, the cools and the, and the warmths of the, of the sky that mother nature presented. And, and then this maker has, 
has uh, recorded for us. Um, I, I don't know if this is one of these, you know, where we flip it horizontal or not, just with that tree branch so that it maybe is going the other other way and that the the tree line's not. Oh, that was bad. bad slip. Well, that, yeah, that, yeah. That made flip, all the difference. Flip. flip. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's just, you know, it's always worth, you know, taking a check uh, on that. I'm trying to think here. Maybe we take a little off the, you know, the right hand side. I, I, I don't know. I think maybe where I'm struggling a little bit. Oh, here, where's my pen is the lightness in here against, I guess, that dark mat, because over here, I mean, every everything around here is all controlled in a nice tone against that dark map, but right here we're in this little pocket. And I think that's um, maybe that's, what's causing me a little confusion, but gosh, lots to enjoy about it. And, and again, you know, holding detail in all of those shadow areas. Um, and I actually like what you've done with the sun, basically, you know, to allow a little streaking coming through there. So, but yeah, I, for me, I would work on this area right in there a little bit. I think there's potential for this image. I I really enjoy um, all of the elements that have brought in, but what I'm seeing in the foreground and in the tree is a pretty heavy magenta cast. Are you guys seeing that? Yeah, but you know that's not that's normal in that kind of light. When you get in the shadows, you're going to get a cool. The light's going to be cool in shadows in a, this kind of a situation. So that's that's not <laughs> abnormal. <laughs> Abby, normal. Abby Norman. <laughs> Wasn't that young Frankenstein? Yes, it was. <laughs> so not not to disagree with you, Ricky, but I, I don't think that's Abby normal to have mm -hmm. that cooler cast in a little bit of light in the shadows. That's that's what's cool about it. Because you probably have they probably have a, a bluer sky above us. The clouds are in front of us there in front of the sun, but there's probably more of an open sky above us, so it's going to give us that cooler tone in the bits of highlights. So I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying you're not right. <laughs> Sorry. Well, so what you're no, saying, and is, Rick? Rick, and, are you still you know, there, Rick? And you know, and you know, Jeff, Jeffy, <laughs> uh, we've always agreed that everyone, and you know, you are certainly entitled to as be wrong else to your own ridiculous. <laughs> Guess where the horse's heads go now? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, maker, sorry, we're not helping you all <laughs> here on this one. You're gonna get a. a a notice from your uh, from your post office, Mister Johnson. We've got a really big box, <laughs> <laughs> and it seems to be leaking. And it's leaking <laughs> with a magenta cast. <laughs> Is it a new play <laughs> on Broadway? Magenta <laughs> cast. Magenta. Okay, sorry. Um, I, I think this is just absolutely a breathtaking capture. I mean, look at the color to the range throughout. You get nice cool tones, and then you've got the very warm, beautiful skies. Even this couple of floaters in here, the clouds are just very cool. It's giving us some depth in the scene. The starburst is very cool. Yeah, I agree with Pete, this area on the left here. Uh, and again, my, my brush tool doesn't seem to be working. So this area on the left here is uh, pulling my eye out. So if this, you know, and I would even go in here just to be more more even pick here, this shadow area here, I'd lighten that up just to bring out just a tiny bit, of ever so slight. You can see some tree trunk there is a little bit there. Just bringing that out just a little bit, I think it wouldn't become this black hole that we fall into and in looking for detail. Matte color, the black matte, what do you guys think about that? Is that okay or would you do something a little bit more in the earthy tones, dark brown kind of a thing? I don't think I would. Uh, there's so much color going on in the scene itself. I I don't believe I would. Okay. Should I maybe look at it in black and white? No, sorry. I don't know that I'd go like pure black on it, maybe really dark gray. I, I don't know. I mean, this is one of these where, um, I mean, I get dinged on this all the time, so I'm really probably not the right person to, to, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, to, me too. to do this. But I, but I, 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 where I struggle is like, yeah, with that dark, it kind of makes this vast, kind of area like confined and i can appreciate if maybe that's what they want to do but i'm like maybe if it was just a little lighter like jeff you're picking a, i don't know what tone you were thinking of down there but maybe that would help still give us focus in there but yet still maybe give it a little bit more of that vastness that that it is pure black and pure white mats 
it, it like I can go really dark gray or really light gray, but it, it seems to me that um, they cause more confusion, at least for me or and what I've observed than than not. I've had some pretty good luck with very dark browns in this kind of scenery. Something that's even in a shade that's almost in the shadows of these rocks or a really dark. But I mean, it's 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 almost it's very subtle of color, but it's just enough to not be black. I don't know. Let's, I've tried that. That work seems to work pretty well. We just have a couple more here to go. So let's move on with the carpenter. Rick, jump in, man. Really nice directional light. I, I really enjoy the uh, uh, the kicker uh, on the subject from camera left. In terms of uh, expression, you know, it's, you know, direct. There's a connection, obviously, that the maker has with the subject. I like the accessorizing, as I like to call it, with the pencil, you know, on his ear. It, it certainly tells the story. Um, I guess I'm a little bit um, hoping that the background wouldn't be blotchy the way it is. You know, certainly we've got that uh, uh, shallow depth of field and it uh, helps to create that the dimension and depth. But, uh, you know, darn it, it's just a little bit too... Uh, um, too distracting. Maybe just a little too contrasty overall. Yeah, and overall, I think the image is just a touch contrasty. But what a wonderful uh, subject, and so much can be done with the uh, uh, with this subject. But um, I, you know, I just think that if we had a little bit more engagement in terms of because it was called what the the con contractor was just it? Carpenter? called the car the carpenter or oh, the carpenter. Okay, man, and with this subject. Uh, gosh, engaging in what he does, you know, with uh, with different props, and I, I'm not. I guess what I'm saying is, uh, you know, offering these uh, suggestions about this image that we're seeing, but encouraging the maker to to uh, continue on, especially with this subject, and engaging them, you know, with the uh, tools of his trade and actually working, because the the maker certainly has a a good command of um, of lighting. And to use that uh, with the subject engaged in what they do. So, you know, don't stop here. Uh, you know, get that, take that subject and work with him uh, some more with uh, elements of his craft is where I'm going with it. But the image that I'm seeing here are those things that concern me. The background, you know, being distracting like that. And, uh, you know, a nice headshot. But, um, you know, I think more of a story could be told with this subject. I just played with a uh, contrast slider just to back that off yeah. a little. I think that already does what you're saying. It softens up the black and the tr takes that background to not be as harsh. You uh, know, and then I saw the, I saw the, um, uh, let's see, the the, the uh, spots on his uh, shirt, and I thought, man, you know. Those can be taken care of, but then I wouldn't, because uh, I'm thinking, man, that's probably sawdust. Probably or sawdust. I see it in his beard on his cheek as well. Up yeah. Here too. yeah, yeah. So probably sawdust. But I I would encourage the maker to take this subject and, you know, maybe they have some images, but to engage, uh, have the subject engaged in what they're doing, because that tells so much more of a story. And then, you know, some dr dramatic lighting, a la Pete Rizak, and you've got it going, man. <laughs> You got a Pete image there then. <laughs> well, well said, guys. I agree. Um, not much more I can add to it, but I think it's it's a great um, story. And I think, it, uh, and I wish my beard looked that nice. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's an environmental portrait. Um, and yeah, I like the, that they left the, the sawdust in there. I actually, I mean, and th this is me. I actually like the contrast of it. I mean, this is a great thing about how we all see things differently. Right. Exactly. Um, and, and yeah, I can, I can appreciate concerns about, you know, the, the background or whatever, but I also really kind of like it because I do get some lines moving around that stay right locked into, into his expression. And yes, um, sure. But he's got his carpenter pencil there and his safety glasses or whatever. I mean, I wish it was a St. Louis Cardinals hat rather than an angel's hat that he's wearing, but, <laughs> but you know, I mean, you can't have everything. 
but I I do like it. I I feel that it is a contemporary environmental portrait. Um, you know that. I mean, he just he's. I, I have not unlocked gaze with him since we started talking about it. That's true. Um, and I I think that it, he just draws you in. Um, I think for an available light portrait is what it feels like to me. We've got you know almost a Rembrandt pattern. Yeah, there is some high contrast to it. And again, it may not not be for everyone, but I think this is a stylistic choice. Uh, and maybe that's the voice, maybe that's the voice for this particular maker. And I, you know, to do that. Um, yeah, I when Jeff was messing around with some things, I'm like, yeah, you know, I kind of like it, but but I also like, you know, what they've done. I think more what concerns me is just kind of that bottom right hand corner where we get really dark down there um you know and i'm not sure if that's the shade or whatever it'd be nice to see some detail or you know crop in or whatever but i mean this is a head it, uh, it's a it's a headshot of a carpenter in an environmental style and so i i guess you know it works for me I, in short i mean if it challenged i would i would i would definitely be vocalizing all of these what i just had done i i think it's 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 well done for an environmental portrait i will tell you guys that that's my picture and he was building or he was repairing my deck i said hey look at me i saw the light he was shaded by the top of the deck the lighting looked good and i actually increased the contrast because i liked it more contrasty and and the background was just what there was that was the right that was just the backyard, so I, I wasn't going to move him. Would you, would you can would you consider working with him again, and you know, with some of these thoughts that uh, that I had about engaging him with some of his, because uh, you've done such beautiful images with your military and the props that uh, uh, that they have. Uh, how would you feel about doing that? Uh, uh, well, the answer is no because the deck is done. <laughs> you don't want to pay it's so, going to cost you to bring I'm not back. paying I'm not paying so, him to come back yeah so the next question so there Cliff is, what's his phone number so Rick can call him <laughs> that's right that's right I, Rick's got a deck in, issue now it wasn't intended well, that, as a competition I, mean, I, just, right. I just saw the guy working and he had a great face I said let me take your picture and he said I don't take a good picture I said that's okay I do and I took it. <laughs> well shoot now that we know it's Cliff's it's outstanding it's a hundred <laughs> let's move on this is a wonderful cliff great great yeah. shot Love that. thank you well this is how we all see it differently too right i mean yeah I mean, exactly every, nobody's wrong on on what they said on it it's right. it's it's just that's how we all definitely see it so well, it's you, that tongue-in-cheek cliffy you wouldn't ask him back uh no <laughs> okay <laughs> We just got personal. Okay, the next image. <laughs> He's a Cardinals fan. He might have... I mean, I'm I'm not going interrupt, to interrupt the guy's work day to come back so I can get a picture. I mean, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not saying. Well, we can talk about this later. <laughs> oh, does that sound like a challenge to you? <laughs> okay, we have two more images to go. We're getting a little late here, so let's move on. This one is called Tighten Up, number three. <laughs> go ahead, Pete. What's your thoughts? Uh, I 100 out of the gate i <laughs> know uh, i love the story i like i don't wow uh that's all i got to say i don't i everything about it is just sensational i don't have anything else i i know they probably should come up with some of it i don't know the story tells the reason why we've got a little gap there lighting's fantastic i mean everything about it screams excellence to me that's good enough. I'm sure the maker's happy with that. Rick, what do you want to add? Oh, man, the, the story is so well told here, yeah. just by the title. Uh, and that's what that's what pulls it all together. And then in terms of uh, of color harmony, uh, it's all there. The presentation is handled very, very well. You know, we've got a, a really nice key line uh, that's faint, but it's it's uh, uh, just in such great harmony, color harmony with the rest of the image beautiful yeah not much more i can add to it i think it's absolutely a, a a stunning capture the placement of the birds is very cool um the whole thing about it is just you know subtlety in the colors this the the clouds 
same color tone, that little bit of blue just gives us a little bit of break and adds a little depth to it. And the composition, the cropping is done well. Yeah, there's not, it's one of those images where, you know, not that we want to say anything negative about it, but if there's not, then we just shut up. So, uh, just, yeah, that's, yeah, like, just because we're not saying much doesn't mean we don't know what to say. It's, it's outstanding. The only thing I maybe could add to it is just, We've got this almost a uh, almost a uh, uh, duotone, if you will. Um, the white clouds at the bottom. I might brown those up a little bit. <laughs> I might not necessarily cut. I, I like the balance that they're giving us a little bit of a base to the image, but maybe if those white clouds are just a little bit more of the color of the clouds at the top, it would be a little bit more color coordinated. Minor, minor thing. That's probably all I could say about it. Yeah, I like how that that bottom bird, even with the bluish sky, just frames him but you know to tell the whole story even more absolutely all right we go one more image to do and we'll chat about that one this one is called wild eyes <clears throat> wild eyes wow mm. pete black and white you're especially what do you think uh, yeah uh again uh to come across this uh in the wild that's so incredible compositionally we got that triangle of the heads coming around you know the expression the exposure seems to be great um i'm not sure you know what's it, of course and i obviously it was probably blue sky that was turned black and white but it just seems like we got some digital weirdness going on in the sky or maybe that's through zoom so i, I don't know but something seems a little a little off but gosh that that that's it's incredible um you know i just watch you know some of the highlights i'm guessing this is dust that's being kicked up down here from from these guys fighting um but wow great impact and it stays rick what do you think uh, um you nailed it Pete. for me was impact and man uh looking at the at the horse on top and that expression and then the the mane is just flying through the air and almost a, a submissiveness of the the lower horse uh you know man and it, it's it's a very very powerful image yeah when this first was submitted um absolutely fell in love with it and i guess yeah the only thing i could say is it make her look at the uh the noise in the sky and that's something that could be uh, resolved very simply because I don't see it in the horses and it doesn't matter. It's almost a texture there, but boy, what an awesome capture story feeling. The impact is so outstanding. I mean, this expression on the horse in the background, the attacking horse, the bully, whatever, um, definitely has wild eyes, definitely has that feeling of, I don't know if they were PO'd at the other one or if they're just playing, but there's some dramatic expression and wonderful story here. So it's looks, like a, looks like a Scott Wilson picture, doesn't it? And that's a real compliment. There you go. That's, yep, yep, to the maker. That's a definite compliment there is to put it in that class of Scott mm. does all of these horses up there in sand wash, sand wash basin. Uh, well, well done. All right. Well, that's the last of our images for this show. Is there any stuff, anything you guys want me to bring back? Some incredible images there. Wow. Wasn't it? A great show. Yeah. Anybody have any questions or comments? Let's see, there's a couple new messes here. <clears throat> yeah, everybody's liking that wild horse image quite a bit. Quite a bit. Let's see. Let me get rid of the uh, Zoom share so you can see me again because I know you've been waiting for that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not even my mom would wish that. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, well, absolutely awesome show. Wonderful images. Thank you again. Watch for, I'll just mention this again, because we've kind of messed up the schedule a little bit. The next two shows are kind of going to be devoted towards some trial grounds for you folks to get images ready for the uh, Colorado competition in uh, October 20th. And um, there'll be information on the site in the next couple of days as to how to upload and and how to, because uh, um, you do have things changed a little bit. Um, so, yeah, so watch for those information and then send me questions. Don't ask until, until you have the information. Um, but thank you, everybody. Wonderful show. Pete, man, thank you so much for your expertise. I always love hanging out and chatting with you. <laughs>
Well, um, hopefully it was helpful. I yeah. But you know, thank you so much for uh the invitation to be part of it. I mean, uh it was it was awesome and again, really wow, amazing work. Uh wow. Uh, Pete, uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, uh, and I say this very, very often, man, I, you know, when we have our guests on and then couple that with the images that are submitted, it's a real education for me. I, I always like to believe, and I do, that uh, um, I feel I always learn much more than I ever impart. Uh, so really appreciate you being here and taking your time out there's a lot of other things you could have been doing but you chose to visit with us and we're very very grateful as well, thank uh, you you bet as i am to cliff because we can always count on cliffy and uh appreciate yeah, your, your efforts cliff real, real quick though i i want to thank um you know jeff rick and pete for amazing comments tonight i i as i was going through those and all the feedback that was coming through the um chat and so forth and that was very positive so thank well, you so thank much you, for Michael. thank yeah, you really appreciate it more importantly i'm really appreciative of everything that you guys do um i learn so much every single time i uh tune into your programs and so forth enjoy submitting images and getting the good. feedback and well, good, I, good. and again i put this out in the um comments and that but you know, with some of the changes that have taken place with MIR and with PPA and so forth and that, the program that you guys provide, I think is very valuable to many of, not just our, you know, PPC members and that, but to others throughout the um, the rest of the photography communities and so forth and that. So highly encourage you keeping this thing going on. Wow, thank you. Support like yours and the rest of our colleagues uh i see no nothing else but going forward and hopefully scaling this yeah the the and again just w what you do and what you uh jeff rick and pete tonight and the other guests and so forth and that every month this is a, a real valuable resource to many of us so appreciate it Thank well good you. well that's that's all we're trying to do is i mean you know rick and i came from you know so both second generation photographers we had dads who were not only just in photography but they were both pretty good and it we're just trying to spread that on we're just trying to push that forward to, yeah. to those who didn't have don't have those same opportunities and just uh, we're having fun doing it we've got a lot of cool things on the horizon to get more opportunities but also to get some more of you folks our regulars involved even more so stay tuned yeah. for that we'll be asking for some of you to help us out on a couple of projects so uh we got lots to keep you you know you haven't got rid of us yet so. Looking forward to it. Whatever we can do. We, we love right. it. Thanks, Michael. Those two guys are gems. That's all <laughs> I got to say. They are gems. Thanks, I, they, that, that's true. They're, yeah. they're treasures. Uh, you know, feedback and critiques like this, like this is, re regardless of what type of system anything's being evaluated against, the, the feedback that they're doing and, and all of this, regardless of what, it's going to make somebody stronger photographer and their images are going to be stronger and everything's going to grow and so regardless of where it's evaluated it's all gonna it's all gonna be beneficial because it's i mean Good. like it's awesome and, and, and uh, i'll say this once again real quick is is not to take time but like and i put this in the chat but i think i i attribute uh last year i did pretty well in the um uh ppa getting my merits and so forth and that towards my master's. And I will attribute a lot of that to comments that I got from this program cool. that said, mm -hmm. okay, maybe do this, maybe do a little bit of this, maybe, you know, same things that you guys were commenting on tonight. I went back to my, those same images, made a few of those changes and sure enough, they got either imaging excellence or they got merits or whatever. And, and I attribute my master's degree a lot to you know participating in some of the things that you guys are That's cool. suggesting in 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 these discussions and that so i'll go with that uh, we'll we'll take congratulations it. on that thank you michael and i would i'll tell you i mean it, it, those of you who have received your master's degree or any other recognition like that it's pretty pretty great accomplishment and walking across that stage and you know having your friend walk with you and present the 
the award to you is all fantastic, but I'll tell you what, when you can work with people and then they achieve that status, there's nothing more rewarding than to walk across that stage or just have somebody that you've worked with receive some status like that for their work, knowing that you kind of pushed them along, you know, positively pushed them along. Um, mm -hmm. Lots of bad jokes along the way, but that's a, that's to me is I wish there was a pin or some ribbon for that. To just, uh, <laughs> I you know. got drug across the stage by Jeff. Exactly. No. That would be a great, that's a great t-shirt. That's an honor. That's that's an honor. It is. And Pete, I'm starting a t-shirt company. I've been saving all the comments people have made at my workshops for years. Some of them really outstanding comments. I'm going to add that one to the, I got dragged across yeah. the stage by someone. I got drug across the stage by Jeff. And it doesn't matter who knows that anybody's in photography will understand those comments. So that's what I'm about. Anyways. Well, cool. I, I just um, wanted to bring that up. It, 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 yeah, no, thank really, you. Really, this is, this is a strong... I think a, a point that benefits many photographers that are looking to improve their photography and whether it's master's degrees or whatever, some, some may just be looking to try and improve what they can get out of their photographs, but everything you guys brought up tonight was, was right on. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for pointing out. We appreciate that. And, you know, it's obviously we're not doing it for the recognition by any means, but the, recognition you get the awards the trophies the just getting better at being a photographer is what this is all about and i think that i see two or three names in here that look i think they're pretty close to getting their masters as well so um <clears throat> there's one other person in the group she knows who she is we need to get a start on her <laughs> i won't call you out but you know who i'm talking to <laughs> <laughs> anyways hey Jeff wants to drag you across the stage. So <laughs> exactly. Going. Yeah. Well, she's already dragged me across the stage. So that's all right. No. So anyways, uh, gang, thank you. Um, I yeah. don't know what else we can add. I think we come to Pete again. Thank you so much, Cliff. Thanks for your yeah. constant support. That means a lot. And Rick, buddy, thank you, sir, for being part of this with me. Indeed, my friend. Always. You guys uh, enjoy your evening. Thanks again, Pete, Cliff, Jeffy. Enjoy. Yep. Good night. Right. Right. Thank you guys, thanks. Yep. Thank you, Pete. Thank you for watching the Image Critique Show with Jeff Johnson and Rick Avalos. Learn more by checking them out at theimagecritiqueshow.com.